Good morning, Mr. Dube. So we'll be bringing you all the excitement as it unfolds over the next six hours or so. It's a it's a closely packed leaderboard with uh, the lead held by Manu, followed by Yashas and Veer. And on your screen is Arjun with his uh, tee shot on number one. I'm just having a comfortable swipe. Uh, looks like a very exciting day. Uh, missing that to the right a little, and actually, uh, does Arjun. And the leaves are fluttering a little more than they were yesterday. So the wind a definite factor today. Yes, it is a bit more windier than it was yesterday. I was out at the course early this morning, and it felt a little breezier. Nothing, but... nothing too much though. Uh, alongside Arjun. His uh, playing companion today would be Abhinav Lohan. Do you think uh, he's and a Rashid too outside? Khan? Sorry? Do you think sitting at five under, maybe Abhinav, Rashid, and Arjun Prasad are a little too far back? I would actually say so because uh, I don't see Manu coming backwards. We, uh, I think, if anything, he would, uh, in he would, he would definitely add to his score as as in he would go closer to that mark we were talking about yesterday 16 under and uh oh my apologies rashid starting his round at six under par after three rounds and uh rashid khan i mean he doesn't he need uh he needs no introduction actually over 10 wins 14 pro victories for him uh playing partner going right and uh abhinav going left let's see if he can find the center of the fairway yeah he has uh, no holes barred golf swing. He goes after everything. You can see with his yesterday's scorecard, it was like a 
like a roller coaster. Hope he's not dizzy. I'm in the middle of uh, both his play partners finding the fairway, showing them the way. Yeah, he had uh, two eagles in his round yesterday. One on number eight and one on number seventeen. I'm I'm gonna come up with an early query from you. You've seen so much golf played, so much competitive golf. Uh, I always find it fascinating. There are some golfers and professionals who just seem to make more eagles than uh, uh, the rest of the pack. Why, why do you think that is? You know, um, it is probably uh, at the end, uh, no matter how close you hit it, you need a hole apart. And Rashid finishes the hole well. Even if, he's a bo- if he makes a bogey, it's generally he holds a putt for bogey. So somebody who can hold 15, 20 footers, uh, at a higher percentage has a better chance of uh, making an eagle on a hole because the proximity of the hole on an eagle part is not the, is, is a little longer than what you have on a birdie part. So he's a good 10, 15 foot, 20 foot putter. He, uh, he, it's, I think he treats a 20 footer like I would, or you or normal people would treat a 10 footer. So he's a good finisher to a hole. Other than that, he's aggressive. And he he goes after it, and he has he he backs himself to get out of a tough position. So as a result, he goes after it, and he, he takes more chances, and he knows how to finish it off. So leads to more eagles. So I think that's an interesting point because uh, if you think of it, if you're not worried about missing it, you're you're going to swing or putt or chip more confidently. Absolutely, you're focused more on uh, you're accepting that you know what I might hit a bad shot. And that's fine. So you give your uh, uh, shot at hand a little more chance to actually hit a good one. As a, a, a beautiful aerial view, of and you forest. can see how dense the 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 growth of the trees at Noida Golf Course is. You know, I was ta- mentioning to yesterday because I get a view from my from my balcony. It it looks uh, it looks like there's you can hardly see the fairway. So you can see how 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 much the gre- trees have grown over the years. I remember coming out here for in the early 90s and the, there were no trees. They, were, they had just planted that. So if you hit it in the other fairway, it was a one-shot penalty. And now look at these trees, man. They're, they're, they're uh, almost, uh, you can almost not see the fairway. It's Beautiful a drone view. A true tree-line golf course. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's become quite... Uh, daunting now because earlier you know Anish, if you remember if you hit it in hitting the other fairway you could hit it over the trees but now sometimes you can't you need to actually bend it around it you can't just hit it over it now do you think that uh, gives the ball strikers uh, a little more advantage so a view- viewpoint maybe to say that i'm going to curve it off uh, the right side of that tree or uh, maybe bring it back from the left visually do you think it helps most golfers or not really I um, I would actually prefer doing it like that. I I always like to have a good visual on my starting line before I hit a shot, and uh, you know. But not all golfers are the same. Some people generally know okay, this is the way his ball's going to move, and uh, and they just go after it. And it ha- and some people are a little more visual and say okay, some have a feel of what they need to do in the swing and will produce a shot. And some have a more defined feel. Okay, I need to start it there for, and, and I've got to feel like this. And so it's, uh, there's so many different ways to skin a cat, to say, right? I mean, and, uh, different ways of doing it for our golfers here as well. I mean, uh, yesterday when we were watching them, uh, very different approaches and uh, some really good quality coming out from different players and different aspects. I feel uh, I've never seen Noida Golf Course from this view, so it's, I mean, I'm just amazed on how much this clubhouse infrastructure has grown over the years. Indeed, it has. Yeah. And uh, here's a look at our uh, uh, very, very esteemed leaderboard. Uh, we have, of course, Manu Gandas at 13 under par, leading the pack after that uh, wonderful round yesterday, and followed. By Manu would be Yashas a short back at 12 under and Veer uh, uh, two shots behind uh, Manu Gandas at 11 under. Anga Chima, who was part of the leader group yesterday, finds himself sitting at 10 under par, still within uh, a near shot. Three shots uh, behind Manu and uh, rounding out the top five would be Ajitesh recently coming off uh, 
a few injuries and showing his class by being there on the leaderboard. And uh, we just saw Rashid Khan tee off at six under par alongside uh, Rashid at six under par is Karan Pratap Singh. And uh, our top 10 will be rounded out by Jairat Singh Sandhu, Shorya Bhattacharya and Arjun Prasad all at five under par. Some very interesting names, uh, very exciting golfers. What are you, your views on the leaderboard that you just saw? Well, it's uh, there's a lot of uh, depth there. All good, uh, all players in good form have shown their form over the past year or two, and so you know it's going to be. Um, you need to if you want to win it. I still say sixteen is the number. So in case you want to have any chance for the for the chasing pack, they'll have to go really deep today. And uh, Pin positions are a little challenging today, Ainesh. It's not, uh, they've had a little bit of a, the tournament committee has um, made it a little more challenging as far as the pin position goes today. Well, isn't that uh, what the tournament committee does? I mean, whenever you're not playing golf, you're going to make it tougher for the professionals. To see how well they fare on flags. Yesterday's flag positions were... Uh... So let me just give you a brief on how close the flags are to the edge. On the first hole, it's five, six yards from the left edge. On the second hole, it's four yards from the right edge. On the fourth, it's four yards from the left edge. On the fifth, it's five yards from the right edge. Then it's on the seventh. It's five from the left. It's four, five, four, five, four, five. So they I have they have put it in the corners today, and that means you if uh, it's actually playing into Manu's hand. He he likes to play to the center, and he backs himself on holding those longer putts. So in case you want to get low today, either you gonna take your chances and you try to hit, go to the corners or back yourself on mid range putts. It is going to be an interesting mix of how players approach and uh, we just watched uh, Abhinav from the left side playing that little low draw from the trees and did a fairly good job missing it to the left. Should have a decent amount of room for an up and down for a four on the first and Rashid with a swipe on uh, number one and that's a wonderfully done iron shot from the center of the fairway. He's going to have a good look at Eagle. Yeah, he's uh, the pins on the on the top left so he's got some somewhat of a 20 footer coming up for his eagle on number one and this this hole um, has two halves to it the the green on number one the first half is sloping drastically from back to front and the second half from front to back so you know, getting this ball to stop close to the hole, you need to be very precise on where you land this. If it's a, if it has to pick just over the ridge, which you can see on the screen, and then and with enough spin on it, I'm talking as far as Arjun's shot is concerned, and release it, it'll release towards the hole. If you pitch it a wee bit short, it's not gonna, it's gonna sit right there. And uh, while. Arjun does a due diligence for his third. We have Karan Pratap Singh at number six. I, I, I personally find him one of the more exciting golfers uh, on tour currently. Of course, uh, already won on tour twice now. Uh, the 23-year-old uh, uh, lives in Gurgaon and uh, plays in Faridabad. And with a driver here. Yeah. Very similar gripping technique to uh, what Adam Scott uses to create, take his left hand grip. You, you saw what he did before he started. Ajitesh, uh, man, he's um, probably the, got the best rhythm in the field. Doesn't change. His lines on his golf swing also very, very similar to what he was 10 years ago. So consistent. He's just, he's just one of those golfers, very pleasing to the eye, the way he goes about it. And uh, of course, he's won six times, so he knows how to do to get the job done. Um, Turn pro in 2008, it's been a while since he's been doing this. Hailing from Chandigarh is uh, Ajitesh, but very good to see him out on tour. Very good to see him competing and playing well. Always yeah. exciting to have your uh, stars come back and play. Just look at that poise and that finish. Yeah, you can see it has been the same for 
the last uh, two decades just leaked it a bit to the right there but uh, leaking it on the right is the preferred side to leak it on number one because on the left the you can get completely blocked off you can still find the green from the right from the right trees playing alongside would be Anga Chima our uh, leader after round two the 34 year old also from Chandigarh good friends with Ajitesh so should be a fun group for him and uh, Ajitesh. Yeah, there'll be a lot of uh, chit chatting going on today. A lot of fun banter. Does uh, do you think that helps playing with your friends? Do you think it affects your game in a good uh, way, or doesn't really make a difference? I think you know you get a little more comfortable, so which is always uh, it's always helpful. I think. Angad again. He's got one of those uh, free flowing ball swings. Is not doesn't yeah. he, he's technically very sound, but it doesn't seem like he's making a lot of effort to get into positions. And uh, a good start for him finds the fairway. That seems to be the trend uh, of the two groups we saw. Uh, two of them missing it, uh, and one of them hitting the fairway. But off they go. Yeah, he's um, he's he's got a repeatable golf swing, so. Hence the consist consistency in his uh, in his performance and ball striking. Good putter, chipped chipping very well there this week. I think you do need that as well. I mean, uh, this golf course we discussed uh, yesterday. Putting is not the easiest out here. The greens are tricky, and uh, the grain and the slope they they do play. They do have a trick up their sleeve, and uh, we saw a lot of players. Getting uh, confused and uh, under reading or over reading four, five footers, six footers, and that is the difference at the end of the day. Rashid now for his eagle on number one. Yeah, How it's, it's a very straightforward part from there. So give it a good run. Sliding it just by, he's gonna have a three footer coming back for his four. I mean, I've got a wedge uh, out in his hand. I think uh, he's uh, still a little outside of uh, outside the green, but we no, did he's, see uh, him in the second. The, he was in the bunker, so he's uh, forgotten to take the putter from his bag. Caddy was raking the bunker. Yeah. It's a good bunker shot from there. It's a, it's 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 a it's a tough bunker shot from that left bunker. It's, the lip is quite high, and you you barely see the top of the flag. So. Uh, good uh, bunker shot by well, now on the first. You know, if you if it's more like a four point two five. So if you don't make uh, four, you kind of disappointed. Um, I think uh, par start never hurts, but on on the first year, you've got to play like a long par four, and uh, you have to pick up a shot here because uh, as we were talking about this yesterday i think uh the first three or four holes the the potential to a quick start is there and uh even if manu is um let's assume one under par through the first three or four he could still find himself sitting along another person uh, at three or four under par for the day and sharing the lead with him so things can change quite quickly here and uh Arjun, for his four on number one and again that little uh, green read troubling the players early out here. Well, it's not just uh, Noida Golf Club. Green reading is an art itself, I would say. And you know, generally people who read greens well on one golf course generally read it well. You know, it's it's also part of your visualization of the part. So if you don't, if your eyes have not seen the part, Generally, you you you're not confident of what uh, the line you've, you've or you actually don't have a vision on what you're going to do. So it's always good to be able to read your line yourself and not depend too much on your caddy because that's part of the whole uh, process of visualizing a part. I think mm -hmm. usually what I've what I've also noticed, um, people who putt well obviously are are good green readers, but there's a reason for that. They're always trying to. Uh, learn like they're always trying to study what is happening because I think it's it's one of the more underrated uh, facets of the game. It's very undertaught as well. And you know, uh, you know, I was there was doing this. Uh, so basically, if you go, if you go to the if if you go to the golf course every day and play, 
and you read the line yourself, you will get good at it at over a period of time. That's how caddies read the line better. And some caddies who are caddying every day, they're much better line readers. And uh, especially like a go- oh, like- Abhinav there, he was he thought he had gotten it in, but uh, oh, he got more lip than milk than uh, Mick Jagger's wife on her wedding night. I can tell you, he he is shocked, and he, he is shocked yeah. there. He he thought that you, in the middle of the cup. You saw Arjun's putt also a very similar line, and you saw he had over over borrowed it. You missed it on the higher side, which is which is the right side to miss it. But learned a little bit from it. But uh, I I think it's something's fooling them out there because they're seeing more than there is. Let's see. We'll see, find. We have two more groups to come in. I think sometimes it's also a case of maybe you 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 you'd know this better, especially for a golfers like Noida. Um, maybe is it sometimes the slope feels uh, a little strong. And you have to remember that the grain actually really affects the ball out on uh, courses like this. And yeah, especially when it's eight and a, uh, eight, eight point ten on the stem meter. Yeah, then the grain is much stronger than. Then you have a little. Yeah, he just it's, he just stopped in his track. He's just looking here and there. Like, How did that happen? We feel you. We feel you, Abhinav. Uh, we've all been there. Yeah, plenty of opportunities still. Angad now from the left side of the fairway. Taking a wood out, he he, he won't need the uh, the whole three wood here. I think he's gonna play a little soft uh, cut. Yeah, you know, it's you rather hit the swan if you're hitting your approach over the back than leave yourself uh, on the front. So this is fine. You, more the more this side you come, the easier the next shot is. If you're between on this with this flag, if you're between clumps, you, you might as well take something that goes past the hole. Because exactly it's going to be much did. easier, yeah. It's exactly what he did. And that's the reason why he finds himself sitting at 10 on the par. He's played this golf course well. He's doing well on this golf course. And uh... yeah, it's uh, it's the certain pin positions that like on this uh, on this one on number one, uh, you might as well be passed. You'll have an easier part. And uh, we go and see the other ones. Number two. Uh, seven and four from the right. You actually, uh, it's a, going to be a very quick putt if you hit it past the hole. It's a yeah. flag position. Yeah, it's um, it's a quick putt on number on number two. Wrong, it's got a big sloping left. It's right got a from the front. false front also. So it's it's a it's a tight pin number two. And there we have the three people who are going to uh, start off the leader group. But before that, we have. Ajitesh. Not sure if it's uh, his third because we did see him uh, go to the right or yeah, uh, ricochet yeah, it back I, from yeah. the trees. See, I, I I prefer Angad's ball to Ajitesh's ball as they lie right now. He's going to have a big up slope and a slight slope to contend with. And uh, players peering off to the right, so I'm assuming uh, the third member of this group. Is a little to the right, and behind uh, the group, if you notice, there's a player playing uh, hole number two. That's the uh, driven it to the right. Yeah. And the car there uh, also going with the wood, so he must have had some sort of a shot, some sort of a line towards the green. And uh, as they clear the fairway here, exciting times ahead as the leader group is going to tee off very, very shortly from. Now, and seems to be starting them off. Uh, would be Veer Lava taking big, strong swipes and a uh, friendly group for them as well. Manu and Veer, they both, uh, of course, play on the same golf course. And uh... yeah, it's always like in the in the last two groups, you've got two guys who, who play together, so it's going to be a little more, uh, more camaraderie out there. And uh... So they're certainly going to be feeding off each other. I mean, uh, they might be smiling and uh, sharing a laugh there on the tee, but all three of them, including the players ahead of them, have teed off. They all want to just win and move forward. And a few cheers by uh, uh, Jay Prakash there. Vidal Awad, of course, 28, plays in DLF. Lives in Gurgaon, turned 
2016. So it's been a while for him uh, as well as a pro. Uh, close to a decade now. Strong and tall. So if you see the difference between uh, this, uh, Yashas and Manu, you know, to actually to win tournaments, uh, it's how much you can limit your damage. Not just making birdies. It's limiting damage also. And Manu has dropped only three strokes so far. And I think that is uh, that is the impressive thing uh, on a golf course like uh, Noida because yesterday we were discussing the same. It's so easy to uh, pick up shots, but it is so easy to drop them as well. As we watch, uh, Yasha Chandra has been impressing this year quite a lot. The 29-year-old from Mysore turned pro 2018. So he's still uh, a little young as a professional compared to his playing competitors, but um, no dearth of experience, the way he conducts and carries himself, very methodical with the way he goes about things. And I, I would say he's going to be there uh, at the end of the round, having a say in this tournament as well. Yeah, good ball striker. And, you know, he's uh, he, he's got a, he's got good control. I like, I just love his transition. He has no hurry in his uh, transition whatsoever. That might take a kick left because, you know, these, you have these, humps and hollows on the left of the fairway and you, if you get the wrong side of the hump it kicks drastically left and our so Yashas on the other side has dropped 10 strokes made more birdies and now of course the man of the moment starting round number four Manu Gandas the 28 year old from DLF eight pro wins six of them came in a single year the order of merit winner as well and here he is with the driver on number one yeah he's uh, he's always there or thereabouts as far as uh, tournaments here on the pgti are concerned he's always in contention and he's one person who is truly in control of his nerves that playing smacks the fairway yeah very nonchalantly moving off the tee so there we have three of us, three of our leader group, uh, three of the leader group members of the first. We have everybody on the course and... Uh... This is Steel and this is an idea. What happens when we join them? Something fantastic. Like Pravesh Dos, that never age, that save our forests. Or customizable artifone wardrobes that match your personality and are redefining modern homes. <laughs> tomorrow is shaped by imagination and steel. Tata Steel. We also make tomorrow. Eight. So amongst the top four, Yashas has dropped ten, Veer nine, Angad eight, and Manu three. And usually that is the difference. I mean, uh, uh, you don't drop shots and a player like Manu is always going to be making birdies. And Ajitesh now, he's got a difficult attempt on yeah. number one. He's got a lot of slopes to contend with. And uh, there, I think... It's very easy to do that from there. I think you don't even have to hit a poor putt to actually put yourself in that condition. So he's going to have some work on the way back. You know, and coming back to what we were talking about, I would actually prefer him leaving his putt short because this is a really slow putt up the hill. And you don't, you know, it's, um, you just contended something which is fast coming down. Now suddenly you change gears and now you're going back up and do a really slow putt. And it's such, it's, it's such psychology. I mean, sometimes you just, you just cannot get yourself to hit it hard enough. No matter how experienced you are, it just, just it just feels wrong to think that you have to hit that back hard. And uh, this from uh, over the hole, an interesting angle there. Not sure if uh, that angle could be used for coaching at all. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's precariously close to where our camera is positioned. You can see that uh, going over that small hump that comes in the way. And it's, it's actually true, this was a lengthy part as well. Like you said, it's easier. So your chances of holding it are not that great, but then your chances of actually making a yeah. three part from there reduce quite yes, drastically. Yes, yes, absolutely. 
that's what you, you know uh on that pin i don't think there's going to be any eagles today i'll be surprised to see even one and yesterday we had three on number one well i have to take my words back harinder has eagled it <laughs> i'm no surprise with that yeah. he's gone eagle birdie pa pa start today three under after three and as we watch uh Abhinav Lohan with a wonderful iron shot, uh, choosing to lay back on number two. He has... That's a really good play today because in that front pin, if you're in the front bunker, left or right, it's really tight. It's almost impossible. And uh, Aditesh now for his return, but... People have been fooled by how much this putt turns. It turns a little less than correct. So it'll... Yeah. He didn't get it there. Yeah. But... Uh, got the read wrong so we're going to leave a little sour taste in his mouth uh, three part on number one never the ideal start but then uh, with his experience i don't think it's going to fluster him for too long we've got he got suri on his back suri has seen a lot of bags in his uh, career so far he's uh, i've seen him carry for jyoti initially and then uh, he he worked with G, didn't or, or Arjun Atwal, Arjun Atwal, and then Chaurasia, and then uh, Ajitesh now. Much Karan now. You know, this, four feet. It's, this is this uh, is is a tricky part. I mean, he's he's actually quite lucky because he's not finding that light green patch where the grain is different. He's not going to go over it much. So it's not going to, and the time the ball is going over it, it's actually quite fast. So it's not going to affect it so much. So it's it's pretty. Uh, I think uh, maybe a, a ball outside the left edge. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he took less line, but it's a left. It's yeah. just it's just the the trend now. So for if somebody who wasn't uh, with us yesterday and uh, joining us today with, with these greens, the subtlety of the breaks is such that sometimes you just get confused whether it's coming from the left or the right, and if you choose. To, let's say play it from the right side and it's coming off the left it's enough for you to actually miss the putt even if the break is inside the hole it can get you that little lip out like we watched already with karan and abhinav and uh, that's that's been the trend through and everybody's been a victim all the pros playing have been a victim of that uh, subtlety you know i was having a, a word with one of the the referees this week he's um, he's a dentist by profession his name is sujit nagrat and he's a very keen golfer and he's uh you know he's he does a lot of his own i think he's changed his profession and he's become a full-time referee anyway so i was telling him that you know that pin that i said you you place that pin so far back on number 16 and you played took that teeth so far back also it's like you know i i know that hole from the back teeth if you put the pin on the top right you you can barely see the flag it's almost not it. yeah I, I, I was actually in the same topic i was talking to uh, uh, a couple of uh, players uh, um, they already started their fourth round uh, they they actually had a chat with uh, I, I you know if, if 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 you want to put it back right you got to bring that use the front tee yeah you got to use the front, yeah, tee, use yes. the front tee. they, they actually yeah. had an issue with it they said uh, it's it's unfair because one you can't see the flag like you said yeah. and second la you still can't stop it next to that flag. So there's no it's access. Impossible. So it's if yeah. there's no access to a hole, you, you can make it difficult. You can get us to hit a quality shot and uh, Rashid then a bit of a trouble. He's going to go over the green. Yeah, there. he's going to go. Uh, yeah, he'll just stop, stop short of the, the, the other bunker. But that, that's that's why it's. I don't want to, I would not hit a driver today because no, I'm doing anything on thing. the left or right, it's, it's almost like a camel hump, you know? Yeah, but now they're showing uh, why he's a winner this year. He's, he's strategizing and managing the course really well. But but coming back to that 16, I think uh, it's an interesting flag for the viewers. But uh, as a golfer, you need some access. Even if it's a long par three, you need, you need to believe that if you hit a good shot, you can get close to the flag. Absolutely. And you know, uh, it's a par three. They, I, I don't see anybody in the field who can fly it to that flag and stop it there exactly yeah, the because I had, so. there's it's there, it's i don't think it's possible with the with the conditions right now so 
you know, you have to you have to reward good shots. You can't penalize good shots in golf. It's interesting here. Rashid uh, chose a putter from the other side and taking a wedge out this side. And uh, still not in to take the flag out, trying to hold it. Not managing to do that. Still a fair distance to go for, uh, for Rashid. Rashid, of course, the only member in this group to have made a birdie on the first. So... He's not going to, he doesn't want to give a shot back so soon. Yep. It's, it's, and especially he's, he, he was in the green side bunker in, with his drive, uh, actually on the face of it. So, it'll be unfortunate if he can't walks off with the bogey. Avinav, which is, he left himself a really, really good look at birdie on number two. Straight up the hill, not much in this, but giving it a lot of thought after that uh, horseshoe that he had on number one. So heartbreaking to just have that on the start. I mean, if there's a horseshoe written, just have it on like the 10th hole of your round. And now that's another lip. That's another... Uh, well, not a 360, but a 180, definitely. And just two parts that uh, they, they just went half in. I mean, that's just unfair. And uh, throwing his golf ball in anger and um, understandably so. That's just, that's just a little luck not going in his favor. Yeah, you know, uh, all I can say to him, it all evens out at the end. So stay patient, Avinav. Let's hope he gets a yeah. couple of long ones. If huh? you knock on the door, it'll open at some point of time. So keep knocking. Arjun with his uh, uh, short part, you've already seen somebody lip it out. Now you get a little more careful about what you have to do, right? So it's um, trust your line, make a good stroke on it. And that's all you can do, young man, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's already done. Move on to the next one. But uh, yeah, well, well done by Arjun Prasad. But early signs, if he's hitting in that close, uh, if he continues striking the ball the way he's doing, I think he's going to make a few and post a good number. So, in the penultimate group, there's only one birdie by Angad. Both Karnat Tap and uh, Ajitesh part the hole. Ishas has a re this is a really tough pitch, by the way. He needs to decide when to fly it. He's flown it all the way. Pretty good decision, I would say. Rolling it up that slope and then making sure that you don't it has just the right amount of steam coming down the slope is it's actually tougher. So you know when you fly it more, you cut out all those other calculations that you might want to have to do. If you, yeah, but that was on the loss. Breaking uh, yeah. lip out again, but uh, yeah, so that short, short. But he saw him, like uh, he, you saw him peeking at it because he's mm -hmm. already got one lip out. He peeked at it, and I guess you know, you don't peek at it I mean, enough. If if you make a good stroke and you've taken the right line, there's a very good chance you're gonna hold it. Yeah, Manu just over the the back in two on number one. So pretty decent look at buddy, but then you see that light green patch that is between his on, on his line that will throw the ball to the right. So it's like a small mound uh, in the middle of it on, on his line. I think he's just waiting for V who's uh, on the, on the other side of the green. With his eagle attempt on number one. A fair amount of break on this one. A foot, foot and a half from left to right. And pretty slow up this hill, Ainish. Yeah, he's given it enough line though. Really he good part. He it uh, better than what we've seen. Uh, get 
get close to the hole, but it doesn't matter as long as they don't go in. It's still going to be the same score, but a wonderful two part by Veer. Steady start. Yeah, he's uh, he's buried number one, which uh, is more like a par four for these players today. I don't know, carefully going through his little routine and he's he's one of those golfers who always has a better chance. Like, you know how Jordan Spieth is on the PGA Tour? Manuji seems to be better than most of the field when it comes to uh, 15, 20 footers. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, uh, you can see his stats. He's, he's probably number one from this distance. And he's done uh, exactly what uh, you, uh, being a... Be, be, being a local player as well, said that, you know, just go over the hole, don't leave it short. He's been strategizing this course almost perfectly this week. Yes, yeah, so this one's going to throw it a bit to the right, like you can see. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to judge that, by the way, because it's, it's a very small mound. And you're always, you're, you, you think it's going to break from the right all the way, so it's going to continue that way, just to just that little... Yeah. Subtle break back to the right, it yeah. is difficult, but but a, but a comfortable two part nonetheless for him. You know, and when you see that small mound on, in the way, and you have to hit it over, and the grass on that mound is growing the other direction, so it's a it's it's a it's a, it's a green within the green, right? So you know, if I, if you're Manu, you're thinking, okay, you know, you just get this somewhere close, and let's just make four from here, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's the thing with this golf course. Uh, Everybody else, even though he's leading just by one, everybody else around him still has to uh, pick up shots. And Manu is also going to pick a few along the way. So they have to shoot a good number to actually trump Manu as uh, Yasha. This would be a wonderful up and down for him. Yeah, that was it, that was a tough pitch. Uh, this is probably one of the tougher pitches on this flag. Well, good... We see why this is the leader group. All three of them playing the first hole, the most comfortable than what we've seen. Yeah, so they, they remain intact. Mubir moves to 12, Yashas to 13 and Manur to 14. The gap is still one between each of them. And Anga the further shot back. At 11. And we have Ajitesh at 7. Ajitesh now from the right side of the hole coming up. A yeah, little downhill. Huh? So I think he actually did hit it right. He must have might have chipped it out because the, the score sheet is showing him to have made bogey on number one. So he's moved back to seven under. Ajitesh. What a horrible uh, lie. Must have had absolutely no line going into yeah, the green or further up in the fairway. So a little bad luck for him on the first, but. Nothing he can't come back from. He can start by making this part here. Yeah, just over reading it a bit. I don't know. Going through that little routine of uh, reading the green, trying to judge the slope after that bunker shot from the right. So these, uh, if you have, to, if you were angered, what you want to see yourself is at least two under after three, at least to have have any chance to uh, you know push uh, Manu because he will definitely be at least one. And currently, as we see the top four, they they have sort of separated themselves from the field. I mean. Um, of course, we have Manu at 14 and Yash is at 13, followed by Veer at 12. But Angad at 11 under par and the guy next is at 7 under par. So, the top four seems to be where the result is going to come from currently. Unless, of course, someone goes on an absolute rampage and that's a great uh, part by Karan. It's a great up and down actually. One of the more difficult up and downs on that flag. On our screens on the right would be Arjun Prasad now. 
Yeah, he's playing number three, the path part three, missing it, missing it short and right. It's a great chip shot. Uh, that's, that's a tricky uh, two footer there, though. Yeah, but actually, good pitch. There's this big mound that comes in the middle of the green, so you have a choice whether you want to bump it into it and or fly it. He flew it, and yeah, Rashid and how uh, it's done. He's always so good. He he just finds a way to hold it from uh, practically everywhere, and they're showing his class. That's wonderfully hold by Angad as well. Yeah. So Angad uh, got off to a fa uh, fast start today. He's 200 after two. Interesting to see how day four has started. A uh, few more putts, few chip-ins we've already seen now. And all of this happening around one guy, all of this happening around Manu. So he's not bothered actually he's unfazed he's he's thinking okay one one more good swing that's it one shot at a time and he knows he knows how which way it's going to move so he's uh, i agree with yeah. that i think i think if uh, there is uh, one player in the field who's not going to be phased by what's happening around him is is going to be him you know uh, some of our viewers who are We've just started off in golf or uh, it's probably the toughest thing in golf is to hit the ball straight because uh, if you really think about it Ainesh, it's a round object being hit by a flat object so they once you do that there's got to be some kind of spin on it so pro golfers love to move it one way or the other whichever one, whichever way they feel is more comfortable for them to move the ball and uh, and it's repeatable for them. So, contrary to what uh, amateur golfers think, professionals like to move it. The the scary part is when it's not moving. You don't know which way to aim. I agree that actually a lot of amateurs think that uh, golfers tend to hit this straight peering ball fly, which they do sometimes, but they always usually prefer a flight with a certain movement so they know that they can aim it off some side and bring it back whether it is a left to right fade or a right to left draw and it is important for them as well for confidence actually otherwise uh, barely anybody can just aim at a point and say i'm gonna hit a zero zero and uh, hit a straight ball flight so actually uh, uh, the geometry and physics of a golf club design is such that uh, the more the offset on a golf club, the more the club face points left at address itself. So if you are a zero zero swing, the ball should actually draw. And the more offset your club is, uh, that means the more bend at the hosel, the more it will draw. Arjuna, this should be a very, a very impressive up and down here. A little break from the line, wonderfully hold by him. So. No damage is there. A three on the par three. Third is always a good score, an acceptable score. What do you think of this flag position, though? This is uh, this is this is this is one of the easier flags. Uh, more a lot of flat area around the flag, which is uh, difficult uh, to find at uh, number three. Because so you can see your shafts is laid up as well. He must have seen that flag and said, "Okay, this is not one I want to take on with my driver." Yashas always seems to be one of those golfers who, who has a short plan. He, uh, before the start of the tournament, I feel he does a lot of due diligence of how he's going to play the course. And uh, on You can the right see that he's, he, he's thinking of bringing it in from left to right. You can see how he's moving his hand. So let's wait, let's see, wait and watch how he moves this ball. Angad's uh, going to have to deal with the little tear there, so... He's gonna have a good, uh, a good up and in from there for par. Usually, that's what players would do. Uh, Yashas might just take a little left to right, a little cutter, as we might call it, to just soften the spin and soften yeah, the bounce. Yeah, more important right now is making sure you hit your number as far as the distance is concerned. 
You're not going to miss this match. And surprising uh, not to see him on the green there. Yeah, because, you know, this is uh, this is a yardage control shot. It's, you're generally going to hit it straight only because wedges generally don't move so much. So I think he's, uh, he's, he's pulled it a bit left. I always feel that, uh, you know, trying to cut in a wedge is so difficult. I, I, you know, because the loft is such that, you know, it doesn't allow you to move it so much left to right. And uh, I always feel a draw with a wedge is so much more reliable as far as yardage is concerned. Yeah, I think sometimes you just have to keep it as simple as possible. Just go with what your stock is, unless until there's a specific demand of the shot. And more often than not, you're going to put yourself in a decent position. Now these are eagle chips coming up. So uh, I think um, quite a bit of slope as well because we can't see the four, club face. Four three is the is the par for the par for the first two holes is mm. seven. I agree with you there, especially if you uh, on a on a on a Saturday round number four, you you'd want to take all the chances that you can uh, get. Yes, very straightforward chip there. See, and uh, that's perfectly done by Veer Lavat. Oh, we are seeing some hole outs now. Yeah, this was probably the easiest chip you will get on that green. Actually, Manu's uh, is also easy, but has little more break on it. And um, there's a big smile for Veer there, and rightly so. He's, he's, he's gone, wonderfully played two holes. He's gone on a four-two start. So he's um, going to. We are talking about that. I mean, yeah, he's going to jump um, to forty nine. It, it's not going to. Uh, it's not going to face uh, Manu, but he he do, he does know that players are around him going to and could possibly get a fast I, I, start. I, I think he's going to. If this doesn't go in, it'll, it'll really it'll get really close to going in. His his chip coming up. It's it's quite straightforward from there. And the thing is, it's uh, it's uphill. Um, it's not so grainy out there. It's, it's going to move a bit from left see. to right. So Manu's reply now after V's chip in there. Very similar to the chip he had on number seventeen yesterday. Very similar chip. You can see it. If it doesn't go in, it's going to touch the hole. So almost gave it back the same way V did, but it's a wonderful chip nonetheless. Close enough for him to tap it in with his uh, wedge. So both taking a little risk, both getting rewarded. Weed, of course, rewarding himself a little more than Manu did. Now Yashas, uh, Yashas might be thinking that maybe he would have also played a driver and chosen to take the aggressive route. Yeah, it, it was not his tee shot decision which was off. It is this, uh, this wedge play which was not up to the mark. I think. Decision wise, it's pretty pretty decent. It's it's hundred yards from where he was, and from hundred yards, you should be able to you know if you if you want to get your tour averages on proximity to the hole from hundred yards should be ten feet. And mm -hmm. he's he seems to be quite a while away. I mean, um, this is going this is no uh, bargain for two putt here. Yeah, this moves a lot. Uh, it's got maybe three four feet of break in it. And towards the end, it gets quick. Though these greens are slow, yeah, but at the end, this part is quick. I think that makes it more difficult because you know that it's going to be quick because of the downslope, but because the grain is not uh, very, very thinly cut, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not the easiest of parts. Most of the field is under par after the first three holes on. oh well so, he he proved us wrong quite uh, beautifully um easy pickings for yashas there he's definitely got the rub of the greens wonderfully hold by him he was not going to uh let we pick up two shots on him on this hole so great job by yashas yeah so we've had a cup a pair of birdies and and an eagle on number two by our leader group that's quite wonderfully done by the leader group there the combined four under par for this one hole. Yep. 
fast start by the leader group uh, entirely in my opinion not just uh, veer yeah i think um, uh, the par for the first two holes today is from what i've seen you can see the scores up is more is more like this if you don't get 7 you might you've dropped you've dropped half a shot to the field sort of 4 3 or a 4 4 is what a, what it's, it's looking like right now well the top four have yet to actually make a par so unless i'm got the makes that long birdie attempt on number 3 is going to be the first par that he makes good to see good to see good to see as a viewer only makes it more interesting to watch and i hope a lot of crowds pour in and as we can see uh, earlier in the morning as well there are some people there from the start as kan comes up after his tee shot on number 3 which is over the hole yeah choosing the putter there as yes, this is a safe play from there because uh, oh man that was really close to going in what is safe for them i, I think there's nothing safe they're all just going to go try making everything from everywhere now yeah it's uh, it, lo- it looks like everybody's feeding off each other here all the safety warnings have been shut off everything switched off everybody is going to now come hard and strong at the leader another look at this wonderfully wonderfully judged putt by kps I was disappointed that it didn't go in actually that that effort was so so near perfect and i'm going to uh, given the trend in the past few minutes i won't put it past him if he actually ends up making it yeah i won't put it past him at all because uh, he re- he is a good putter i've you know, watched him over the last few events he is consistent with that uh, flat stick of his and it just seems like he's one of the few players who actually putts with a conventional putter and a conventional grip yeah no it's good to see that you know when you when you are not putting when is when you change your grip i, I it's it's almost like yeah. i am speechless he just made that putt on was, number 3 it is phenomenal the way these guys have started i mean yeah he's he's off to a really really good flyer there he's uh, he's buried all the first three holes i'm i am i have been rendered speechless this is just some amazing stunning golf in the beginning of the round we've just begun our coverage i mean we just started a few minutes back and we've already uh, seen a barrage of birdies and an eagle to go with it i remember playing this event maybe in 2003 or 4 and i'd gone i'd lipped out an albatross on number 1 and then i've hit my tee shot just exactly where these guys had hit their tee shot on number 2 and chipped it in and then buddy 3 also so i had gone like eagle eagle buddy and i within within half an hour with the man shot of the lead and they because the leader had started that time be celebrated imagine the leader nissan uh, magnite first watch weed take his uh, iron strike Rashid on number four. That's that's a very 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 gettable flag on number four as well. It's a beautiful tee shot, baby. Just coming up short though, so he's gonna have his work cut out. Rashid, I think he's got his eyes set for a chip in again after number three. Yeah, this, coming up a little short. This though. is feeling like a putter to him right now. The wedge. the first few holes in noida is just like uh, even if you're sitting on the lead uh, someone having a quick start before you into off you realize you're not the leader anymore yeah um, and you know what they they um uh, i want to see how uh, manu keeps his composure through this whole thing he's he can you can see that the leader board changing because these holes run parallel to each other so the 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 board is up with the penultimate group and you can you can see that angit's got up to a fly he's 13 under now and they would have seen uh, uh, angit's putt live standing on the tee box waiting for them to clear the green they would have seen exactly what's happening up front 
and Yash is now taking an iron shot to number three. That's 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 one of the better yeah, three shots. That's the closest we've seen today. It just goes to show Yashas has been on point, very impressive with his ball striking, not just this week. Uh, he's, he's, he's been playing really well for a season and a half now. And no surprises him taking that on. And it, it, it's 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 not the most difficult flag to get to, but you still have to hit a very good iron shot. It's not so, the shortest of par so threes. Let's, uh, if you were Manu, what are you, what are you thinking? He likes to move left to right from what I figured out. And I'm thinking, started the flag, Finish it in the center of the green. I think he's not going to change the way he plays. Yeah, just I think, center uh, green. He, he's won enough. He's played enough to realize that what he does is enough to close out tournaments. Yeah. And uh, I think he's going to stick to his guns. Yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking center green. But he's proven me wrong. And he's gone for it. It's, everybody's on the dance floor. It's, 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 I think it's an acceptable tee shot in the sense that I think he just gives himself so much room. It's 210 yards to the flag today. So it's, he's hit it 15 feet. Uh, I it's, it's it's a good golf shot. It's a, it's a wonderful golf shot. It just uh, gets overshadowed by what uh, Yasha said. But it's not a gimme for Yasha. He still has to hit a good putt to uh, make a two there. And Manu, as we know, with his putting is actually in makeable range. So. Still a lot to play for. Still a lot of golf left. It's it's uh, it's it's barely been since we started, and it's just wonderful to see the starts we've gotten from our players here. Abhinav here actually has been playing really well. He's played the first three particularly well. It's just he's not managed to hold anything. All, of... all fast starts today, uh, Ainish. We have. Um... Almost everybody in the street of number one is uh, under par. At least one under par. Now I've been out on hole number four. He's he's managed to not make anything, hitting some really good quality shots. Let's see if he can manage to get this one on, but uh, getting the read wrong there. He's made a birdie on number. I mean, he's made birdie on number three. So he lipped out that. Buddy part on number one. Then he lipped it out on number two. So sorry, take my words back there. He's part number three, he's part number four. So he feels like he's over par right now. Considering everybody around him is birding it. Leaders finding their way to the third green. V's got the better part of 35 feet coming up, up uh, for his buddy up the hill, right to left. And good to see players getting up and close to the cameras. Warming up that um, the first tee, uh, first tee shot, tee box actually. Yeah, uh, this, this, it's a decent size putting green, you know, yeah, it's got a lot of real estate. Yeah, I just... The t-shirts in the first and the heartbreaking lip outs that Abhinav has had in the first few, but no drop shots for him. Four straight pass. Moving on to the fifth would be Abhinav Lohan. Let's see. Yeah, he just uh, loses a little bit of spine the angle there. He's, uh, you can see that he's draw dominant from that particular aspect of his golf swing. Now, what can we do? With all the putts being holed out, I'd be surprised if he actually uh, misses this from that far out. Yeah, I, I'm, he's definitely going to get the speed right. That's for sure. No, maybe not. Yes, it, it was online. It was online. It was he, online. Had, he read it correctly. 
Yeah, but a little short. I don't, and I don't think that would be an issue for him, but just marking it out just to be short, just going to take his time to tap that in. And now Manu, he's going to definitely give this a, a, a good run. Coming from the left side of the hole, he's on the right tier. But but a lot of uh, those light green patches to contend with for him. Yeah, this, this part has uh, got two three different speeds in it the light green uh, patches where the grain is going the other way is going to be slower so you know getting this line correct is actually a, it's going to be a really good guess and he's uh, wonderful at green reading and i think he's uh, wonderful at green guessing himself finding himself at 15 on the par One of the tricks, uh, I was uh, was playing a tournament in Macau once and there was a putting lesson, putting clinic hosted by the then Masters uh, winner, Marco Mera. And uh, he gave us, give me, gave all of us a really good tip about line reading, which is, uh, which I use and is, I've always been successful as far as line reading is concerned. And uh, basically, he, he told me to sit behind the, the ball and you generally know it's going left to right or right to left, right? And keep shifting your eye line to a point where your eye line gets comfortable. And that's your line. So you can actually sit behind it and, you know, you keep adjusting your eye line to the point where you say, okay, yeah, I think this is correct. And you, when your eye gets... because. Generally, you've played enough golf for you to know how the grain and the slope works. But once your eye line gets comfortable, it gives you, the, you know, the, everything frees up. Basically, it's, I think that's, that's experience mixed with the instinct. It's just trusting that, uh, you know, that's going to happen. But not to be for Manu number three. You now, Yashas, wouldn't he love to pick up? Another shot here after a wonderful long putt hold on number two. Now he he definitely would want to make this. Coming yeah, from a little right, I feel he's aimed a little to the right. Ball right, and that's perfectly done. That is such a beautiful stroke, so confidently done by Yashas. We have a tie on top now uh, at fifteen. Between Manu and Yashas. We cleaning up for, with for his bar number three. Perfectly done by V there. No, no harm there in the sense that he was quite a distance away. So a two part is uh, not going to hurt him there. He's not going to feel like he's giving too much, but Yashas definitely picking up a shot there on his playing partners and it's just making things more interesting now yeah it's tightly bunched on top manu hasn't given anything away uh, so far yashas has gone on a birdie streak as has angad Karan with a very straightforward chip on number four. This is where you want to miss the green if you want, if you do on number four. Uh, one of the more aggressive players on tour, no matter the golf course. He's going to give this a run. He has. Oh, he's Just... coming up slightly short. Still a beautiful chip. It's uh, he's, he's put himself in, as uh, people like to say, the given range. Mm -hmm. Of course, no gimmies on the pro tour. Our first look at number five today. Rashid again, uh, Mr. Dube missing it to the right. Yesterday he was in a bit more trouble. Today, not as far as. Yeah, he's he probably just rolled off the side from the way where that ball is lying. And. Uh, Do you think it's an easier flag position than yesterday? It's I think tucked it, in a little more, but also a little more green from the start. Yeah, this is a very straightforward. Uh, I think he's going to use his putter because it's up the hill and then down and uh, carried a bit too much weight through. But 
Yeah, it's probably this this miss might might not have looked like a miss in the air because if you just miss it a yard on the edge of the green, it's going to roll down there where the ball was lying. And the pin is four four paces from the right edge, and it's about one hundred and eighty yards out, so it's not that big I a miss. Sometimes these these pin positions, like on this one on the fifth, as we described the whole uh, first we watch Ajitesh with his part from over the hole on number four. We watched Abhinav from a similar position getting the read wrong, but also yeah. missing it to the left like Ajit yeah. does. You see that dark green patch of grass. They they they're presuming right now that it's going to push the ball to the right and it doesn't. Coming back to the fifth, um, sometimes I feel on a hole like this, you you have an eight iron or a seven iron, or, or for some long some of the longer players a nine iron as well. You're hugging the outer bounds line from the tee to the green and the flag is of course tucked to the right it sometimes makes your decision easier you tend to not want to attack the flag you 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 play for the heart of the green and that that usually leads to lesser errors as well you, you think know, that happens? I, I i feel that it depends on what ball flag you prefer prefer uh, if that for that pin if you like to or you're comfortable moving it left to right you would still go for it but if you're if you're more comfortable moving it right to left, like uh, like Abhinav is, that's why you see his ball in the center of the green, because he he likes to move it right to left, and moving it right to left on that flag is uh, is it's tight. Basically, you don't want to aim into jail, jail being uh, the out of bounds wall on this on number five. Your eye will never be your. You will never be comfortable swinging the club when you're aiming into trouble. And of course, no, no ball flight for Rasha as he just sees flag no matter where they are. And um, Angad, they're not getting the read right on number four, so he's gonna have a miss there with his first part. Yeah, he's hold everything he's looked at so far, so. No surprises that he's disappointed with that miss. Arjun with his uh, body part on number five, the par three, measuring at 170 yards. Really good part by Arjun. Uh, Arjun there, is, it, it looked like it was going in through and through, but just uh, didn't break at the end as he thought it would. Yeah, the greens, a few hole outs, but the greens still showing their little subtleties. Rashid, after being uh, missing the ball to the right of the green from the first cut of rough. Coming back to, you know, attacking flags, there's a, there's a story I heard. There was a very famous uh, South African golfer called Bobby Locke. And he used to love to move it right to left. And he was on a little bit of a rampage on the PGA Tour. And uh, the Americans didn't like it at all that they were getting beaten by a South African. So they the, the committee decided that... Uh, we should, you know, kind of do some. They, they on the, a couple of events, they put all the flags on the right. But he was so good at moving it right to left, he still got it to get close to the hole. So, you know, if you have these uh, preferred ball flight, uh, you know, like if people like to move left, left to right, they'll there'll be some holes they will love, and, and uh, they won't like the others. And so that's why it's very important. And Tiger, that's why he hit it so close because he he likes to move it both ways. He's comfortable with the left to right as much as the right to left. So that allows him, you Access know, to a few more flags. Yes, and... yes. Especially the longer clubs, you know, the longer clubs, you want to get some of the. Uh, get closer with the flight and then you want the ball to move once it hits the, the surface towards the target. And look at uh, some of the spectators. Good to see people coming out and I think uh, the numbers are only going to increase. Some spectators and some parents out there watching their very, very young kids but very, very good professional golfers playing here this week as we watch Weird 
my name is at the middle of the fairway on number four so the more difficult part of that hole is done yeah they've they've taken uh, a little more let's watch uh angad his t-shirt at number five first they've taken a more uh safer club off the tee you can see they've left themselves with the eight nine nine in and you can see manu's ball he's he's taken a more aggressive club off the tee and he's found the fairways angad going right for that flag he's he's on the charge today he's got he's a he's a man on a mission it's a wonderful shot by him beautifully struck beautifully judged he's left himself a great look at birdie on number five and he had a great look at buddy number four as well, which he misread. And he knows the the number in his. I'm sure he's got a number in his mind which he needs to reach today to he have any chance. Yeah. Himself that start, uh, start and Karan now would like to follow suit. I I, I think it'll be difficult to match uh, or get inside Angad's tee shot, but Karan now just getting a little disturbed by something. No yeah, surprise. Just, Maybe the wind switched a little bit. No, just trying to make sure that he's clear in what he wants to do and he's, he's comfortable with the, the club as far as the yardage is concerned. You want to move it left to right on this pin if you want to get close. Can you say he's, yes. he's between clubs and... Um, Junior clubs, never a good sign uh, being in, in between clubs, especially with a hole that has the out of bounds lurking right off the tee box all the way up to the green. I don't know, ready to go. Yeah. Keep your thoughts clear and make the swing you can make you know you can make, young man. It looks like he's pulled it a bit to the left. Seems like that's some great camera work, and he has. He's, he never say, seems settled uh, on the ball there. I think he's just fidgety, just taking that little extra look. He's never sure of, of what he was doing. Yeah, double crossed it. You know, wanted to move it left to right, ended up missing it on the left. Ajitesh now, the third member of this group. Yeah, he's a seasoned professional. He is, and he, his decision making part is really quick. He's gonna play, play a little peeling fade onto this flag. Yeah, it looks like it's tracking though, and it is gets a very friendly bounce and almost gets it inside uh, Angad, but a beautiful tee shot nonetheless. I think he's got an easier part than uh, what Angad has. Now he used the contours of the green to get closer. And that's our, the putting green at Noida Golf Course. Very decent sized putting green. Some members practicing their putting. Yeah, they're probably getting a few practice uh, putts in before they maybe go follow of the groups on the back nine as uh, you can see on your screens we're bringing you the live coverage of the nissan presents delhi ncr open 2024 from the noida golf course noida we of course uh, are sitting in the abp studios and uh, covering this event for you we were there with you yesterday and we'll be there with you today throughout the conclusion of this tournament so do join us do stay with us it's, it looks uh, very very exciting to see uh, a bunch of birdies and uh, some eagles as well so a lot to play and a lot to play for as well yeah our leaders have made their way to the fourth green the lead now shared by two yashas and manu A chance off to a really quick start today, having buried the first three holes. We sizing up his buddy part on number four, going through his uh, the aim point technique to 
read the line you know aim point is a is a tool that professional golfers have recently started using to become better at line reading it's uh the first person to actually take it on tour, Einish, was uh, Adam Scott. He was the first one to use it on tour. So let's see if he's got the read correct. We've seen everybody miss read this on the lower side. And he's the first one who misread, who's missed it on the higher side. That's so just coming up short there, Veer. Looks like uh, Yashas has got a very, very makeable birdie putt coming up on number four. And Manu is inside him. He's, 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 uh, so it looks like... Um, we might see a little bit of change on the leaderboard as far as the score is concerned once this hole is finished. Has Yashas won on tour? Yes, I think he's a winner on tour. And, uh... and I think he's just been very consistent of late, as we see um, one of our co leaders, Yashas Chandra. Playing alongside uh, Manu Bindas, also finding himself at 15 under par. Yeah. He's made his last three parts, and it looks like he's just teamed this one past, give it too much uh, speed. We haven't seen a putt uh, being made on number four, so the fourth flag position seems to be a tricky one. But uh, we still have Manu to go, Manu to play this and have a putt. Not too far away would be Manu coming from under the hole. Not sure whether that's for his uh, three or four. We'll know short, shortly, but he would definitely like to make this from this range. I think this uh, it's not going to break too much. I think it's going to be... It's got a little bit of right to left on it. Not much, though. He's, had, he's going to have to keep the pace up on this one. Yeah, he's, he's, his space has been on song this week, so I don't see this coming up short, oh. but he's, uh, he's got a, I think he misread it. Yeah. I think I think he played it a little straighter than the break was, because I think yeah. he, he didn't look like he was troubled by the stroke he made, just under reading that a little bit, and uh, he's going to be disappointed with that putt not dropping in another look at the lip out for manu nyasha's cleaning up comfortably On to number five. So get back from up and above, getting to Noida Golf Course. That's the entrance and the beautiful clubhouse. So many renovations and uh, upgrade over the years and uh, some wonderful upkeep. In the last few years of the facility and very dense, perfectly tree lined. You know, I I moved to Noida in nineteen ninety four, I think, and there was just one room 
in this golf course. There's just one room. And I've seen this, and the only thing you could get to drink was Nemupani. So it's been, uh, it's, it's, I've seen this transform drastically. Very fast and uh, very beautiful growth of this golf club. Uh, where we find ourselves coming back every year and enjoying the golf every time we find ourselves here. Well, I was just going through uh, Yashas's uh, history on, on our PGTI. He has not won on the PGTI. He has won the national games, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's had a couple of runner-up finishes, but no victory so far. But, but he has won the national games at the Delhi Golf Club last year. And, uh, that's the updated leaderboard. After the first four holes of the leader group, we find uh, Yashas and Manu now sharing the lead. Manu, of course, starting the day at 13 under par, picked up two shots in the four holes. And Yashas has picked up three shots in the first four. So he finds himself alongside Manu at 15 under. Veer, of course, after that uh, beautiful uh, birdie eagle start. Finds himself 14 under and uh, a short adrift. And Angad Chima, after five holes, uh, finds himself 20, 12 under par. Coming back to Angad, we saw him at it really close on number five. I'm not sure whether it looks like he uh, has uh, three putted it from that short distance. That's very surprising. That, that would be very shocking indeed. And uh, that, that wouldn't be the easiest uh, mental, that wouldn't be the easiest thought going into number six. Yeah, just uh, very yeah, similar just to that. the flight that. Ajitesh had chosen on this hole. So moving a little left more right. run than uh, we've seen on the green. Maybe we took a longer club. And... No, no, it's just that there's a spine, as you know, on the on the green. If you hit the down slope of the spine, which you can see now, uh, where the grass is darker is where the spine is ending. And if you catch that down slope, then it releases a bit. We uh, would probably have a better chance of stopping it closer. He plays a higher ball flight as well. He's gonna. He, he, he. I think he's taking it up on the right side of the tee box, so he might be playing that little peeling fade back towards the flag as well. Yeah, that's the that's the pattern preferred on this uh, hole today because it's precariously close to the right edge of the green. Very little space there. Very similar. So, you know, you see Veer's ball has flown that slope, that spine. It is exactly the thing we were talking about on Q, playing a higher ball flight, little peeling fade, stopping it quicker. And landing on it on in the the grain also, was where his ball is pitched is into the grain. So, that as a result, more, uh, it sits faster. And that would have looked so good uh, once it left the club face. We the spectators there would have enjoyed that tee shot. Now Manu. Yeah, I'm surprised he missed that part though. You haven't seen him miss anything in the past two days. And nothing holdable has been missed so far. Except for that one. But Manu he's... trying to uh, play a little high left to right as well. But uh double crossing it a little not coming back towards the flag enough uh, what do you make of this putt from that range uh, well it's um, it's slow though it looks it's it's downhill most most of its journey it, the initial part is uphill but it's still slow you, you need to give it a fair amount of hit Surprised, but we saw Angad had it really close. So we thought there was another one coming up, right? Because he had buried one, two, and three, then narrowly missed on number four. Then he's, he's three-putted number five, which is so surprising. 
And on the other hand, Ajitesh, who's further, has hold, has made body on five. Good to see something going in for Ajitesh. One of the better ball strikers, one of the more consistent ball strikers as well. Yeah, we got a little bit of gallery following our leader group today. Uh, many more people out on the course watching some good golf. Everybody seems to be under par today. Jashas, 3 under after 4. Manu, 2 under after 4. Veer, 3 under after 4. Angad, who was 300 after four, is just bogey number five to go back. And he's uh, now at 12 under, the leaders at 15. Jairaj Singh Sandhu on your screen. The only left hander to win on the PGTI so far. He's doing it. A good wrap, making it to the hole. Some this is a really slow part, so getting to the hole is a task itself. Tidying up. Our leaders on hole on green number five, the 170 yard par three. The pin is really close to the right edge of the green today, very close to the outer bounce wall. Manu just double crossing his tee shot a bit, finding the left edge of the green. It's got 40 45 feet coming up for birdie. Reads it a good one in there. He's got about 10 feet left for his birdie come on number five. This is this is a part where you just want to lag it up close so you, and leave yourself no work. Yes, I think even for the mighty Manu, this is not going to be uh, an easy two part. This is a this is a uh, tough one to get the pace correct. You know, parts that are first uphill and then downhill, all is tougher to judge. But he's he's a really good putter, so, you know, it's, it's probably, I would give him 10 out of 10 for that. That's absolutely brilliant, actually. And uh, sometimes you don't realize it's not always about uh, making the putt. It is also about hitting those uh, lag parts close he's, to the hole. He's he's a complete golfer. You know, if you want to win tournaments, you need to have a complete game. You need to be a good lag putter as well. He's just shown uh, a brilliant all-round game. Um, he barely puts himself out of position, but if he does, he brings himself back in and into position, and usually keeps the damage to a minimum. He is one. He is the one amongst the top four who has dropped the least amount of strokes this week. He's made one bogey and, and, and a double bogey so far in his three previous rounds. Yashas with his birdie putt on number five. This will be an interesting exchange of blows if he manages to make this one. 
Yeah, it looked a little rushed though, that stroke, you know, it was a little quick Not in the transition. Speed yeah. the speed right there, but there's still a three, no damages to the scorecard. Mano with this tap in for par. Comfortably hold for him. Now we would have an opportunity to make a birdie and join that list sitting at 15 under par. And this would be an interesting change of events then. Uh, we to join the show, make it a three way tie. You know, just a three way tie, if you look at it, uh, they might slowly then separate themselves from the entire field and then it becomes uh, sort of a match play situation between the three of them. And then it can get really low the scoring. This has got a little bit of right to left in it, surprisingly. And yeah. not getting enough break there, that, that's going to be disappointing. Yeah, misread it most likely. Yeah, a little sober after that quick start. Beautiful drone view of, like I told you, there's a lot of trees on Noida Golf Course. I've never seen Noida Golf Course from a, on, with an aerial view, so I'm just soaking it in. It is quite uh, stunning and perfectly also shows uh, the narrow. So one, so for the viewers who uh, haven't played here, the one nine you'll find if it's blowing head tail, head tail, head tail, and the next nine will blow, blow left to right, right to left, left because it sits on the other in the other direction altogether. So it's one six sits perpendicular and then one sits across it. So. One nine is, as far as the wind condition is concerned, is very different from the next nine. So if you have a, a lot of cross winds on in the front nine, you'll have a lot of up and down wind on the on the back nine and vice versa. Mr. Dubey, you've played so much golf, you've experienced so much golf, you've taught so much golf. I want to ask you one question. In my experience, in my humble professional experience, why is it that if you play a hole in headwind, and you come up on the hole which comes exactly back. Mm -hmm. Why do you always never feel the tailwind on that? Why is it always two headwinds? Uh, sometimes it, it does happen though. It's not like it doesn't happen. Wind, wind is, uh, if, if it's gusty, it's, it, it can it change. Can it can change yeah. very quickly. So I have I've experienced it myself that, okay, this was, and sometimes, you know, you have a power five coming in and you know it's changing around and you're just hoping when you come to the t it's downwind right and uh, sometimes you have a tight approach shot and it's you know it's changing around it's okay please change into head you know please change into head so you know that you can get the, bo the ball to stop faster so um i'm not um, you know i don't think the wind changes uh, it, if it's if it's if it's gusty, it does change. I know that for a fact. And you know, um, guessing the wind is also an art. It's it comes with experience. You know, if you guessed it right, and it'll be people. People say, "Oh, you know, he overclubbed it. He guessed." You know, I was watching uh, a Scotty Scheffler's uh, interview yesterday, and he's hit a four iron into number eleven at the Masters. Come up short. The wind is gusting at 30, he's, he's given 30 yards of wind from in front and comes to the 12th tee again, playing into the same wind. Now he's given it 10 yards since it's an eight iron and he's overclubbed it. It's gone in the back bunker. That's it's, actually very interesting. To see so that. you know that it, and wouldn't you give an eight iron 10 after you've given a four iron 30, right? You would, right? But it was, it, the wind stopped. And it went, it was too much love, though he hold that bunker shot consequently, but it does make it the rain and the wind do make things very, very difficult for golfers. So, you know, what I'm, we're trying to say to the viewers that these guys who are on your screen, they are, it's, 
they are very good at reading the wind also so if they if they over club it on someone it's they've been it's switched most of the time it's not like they don't know how right. much to or, or when there is i actually like uh, the attitude that arjun sharma has when it comes to strong winds when you go when you tell him that on a particular hole if you go yaar arjun uh, us pe headwind chalegi and his reply is like koi nahi partner agle pe tailwind hai <laughs> and he's always always uh, going the positive way always trying to tell himself that he's never out of the hole as rashid on uh, number 7 now this in my opinion is the trickiest flag position and uh, the toughest to get to on number 7 absolutely and this is uh, tough to get close to and it's it's in the middle of the green on the back edge so one would assume there's so much green to work with but uh, i mean when we saw it yesterday it is tough but here you the chances of you making an error are higher in my opinion yeah this is a pin uh, where i if, if i was playing and i had a wedge i would actually want to land it at the flag I would want it to go just past the flag, and you almost have to catch it perfectly and crisply because if you catch it slightly thin, or if you hit it a little over, it just shoots off the green. You know, another thing you don't, uh, the viewers don't realize sometimes it's the lie that determines how much you're going to hit a hit the shot. Also, so if you have a skinny lie, you want to take that, put in a little five yards extra. Um, and uh, maybe change the club to a little longer club because you know it's it's skinny skinny means there's the ball is sitting very tight to the ground and this arjun are contending with a couple of uh, slopes there perfectly almost perfectly executed on to number 7 but he should be happy with that effort yeah that's a, a really good lag putt from there You know, if this was at eleven, that would be a really tough putt. Absolutely, I think, I think be, it would be almost yeah, impossible. To yes, it has then. so much of slope on this green. It's uh, it's it's like a roller coaster. This green, with sideways and front and back in all directions. So, um, with this at close to nine, it's it's very doable. But this these greens, if they get To ten, eleven, it's uh, it's going to be tough to judge these parts. Abhinav now on uh, number seven. He's not, he's not particularly having the best day on the green. He's not making errors, but uh, he's not managing to hold anything. But he's been quite uh, brilliant ball striking wise up until this point. He's given himself a look on every hole, which is uh, which is good. At least you know that you're giving yourself looks. And you know, though they, we as golfers are never satisfied with any result ever, we always feel that we can do better than what we are doing right now. But giving yourself a good look on every hole is uh, you. It's you are gonna that that door is gonna open, and you are gonna hold. At some point of time, yeah, he didn't manage yeah. to hold that one, but two really good putts there. The first putt would have looked really good tracking all the way, and uh, just narrowly missing out. Rashid now is just not the easiest of cleanups. Little downhill from the right and uh, comfortable. I just downhill. love the way he hits these short putts, and these are not easy putts on this on on these rainy greens. I like how Rashid approaches his uh, putting, especially he doesn't waste a lot of time mentally pondering over what he might not do. It makes a decision and trusts it. And sometimes you're going to miss, but you know, eight out of ten times it works for him, and I think that's a better average than most people. I remember this uh, one. This is uh, us at the APP Studios. This is me, Amit Dubey, and this is my fellow commentator, Ayne Shalwalia, and we are. Going to give you all the coverage you need today from the Nissan Presents Delhi NCR Open from Noida Golf Course, and uh, today is the final round, and things have heated up. We have a joint lead on top, uh, Manu and uh, Yashas leading the pack, and 
a short adrift is Veer. So, you know, coming back to Rashid and his, and his putting, and um, he's, uh, he's someone who is so sure of himself on the putting green. And, um, and, I, and I remember this one. If, have you played in uh, Coimbatore? I have, I have, yeah. Okay, so, you know, if you, if, you, if you recall, on one of the path fours, there's these big boards and they have these golf sayings on it. And I remember reading one out there. I think it was ben, Bernhard Langer's quote. And it, it quoted that in golf, indecision is worse than a bad decision. Absolutely. And I, I firmly believe in that myself as well because, you know, most of the time you your indecisiveness gives you a far worse result than if you just made a bad decision it makes it very difficult to actually put a good uh, stroke or even a good swing at it i think i think the prerequisite to playing good golf is to make sure that the decision you make is the right decision and you go through with it yeah and you know if it's if it's uh, it's marginally wrong you're not going to make a complete blunder you you have the experience you are a professional golfer you are going to make very professional decisions so if it's marginally off it's not going to lead to a huge mistake again it's accepting what you are because we saw it yesterday and today both when uh, yashas on number 10 yesterday had uh, was in between clubs and uh, uh, current today on number five was in between clubs they both ended up hitting a very poor tee shot and you could see by the demeanor that they were not comfortable standing over the ball but Otherwise, through uh, four rounds, they've been brilliant with their ball striking. Yeah, and you know, uh, between clubs is uh, probably something I was w- watching on uh, on uh, TV last night. It was the Mr. Dubey, you're disturbing GPS. He GPS. can hear us. He can hear everything around in Noida. GPS. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gaurav Pratap Singh, that is, and we have KPS as Karam Pratap Singh, right? So GPS and KPS had a playoff once out here. Oh yeah, and then yeah. uh, GPS managed to trump them there. I yeah. remember. So um, Gaurav Pratap uh, on his tee shot on number ten with the Nissan up for grabs. If you have a hole in one, he just misread it a bit. I think misjudged the wind. Whatever it has, he had the weight correct. But you know what, uh, the, the way he is, uh, the jovial character that Mr. GPS is, uh, if he makes that buddy, he might convince Nissan to give him the car anyway. Hmm. He, he does have that uh, talent and he does uh, uh, have those characteristics. But And he's playing with uh, Shiva in the Sisodia. And how do you think City is yes. uh, unmissable, <laughs> the, the, the tall lad? I, I, you know, sometimes I feel like asking if the cool air is cooler up there because, you know. I'm sure it he's, is. He's, he lives with it. Hello, my name is Amardeep Malik and today I'm here to tell you about uh, Noida Golf Course signature hole number 10. As you can see, this uh, hole is a hole-in-one uh, prize for the Delhi NCR 2024 presented by Nissan and they're offering us a magnite for a hole-in-one here. This hole is a very interesting hole because it has a very big water feature right before the green and OB behind. The wind is very uh, gusty and uh, you know it switches a lot here so the pros have to be really careful about being very sure of what wind they are playing and um, yeah it's, it's going to be a really interesting hole because a lot of guys are going to be starting off this, half the field is going to be starting off this tee. So I'm pretty sure all of those guys would want to be on the green and uh, definitely trying for a new brand new Magnite. Oh, stop! (laughs) As you can see, this par 3 has a big water body in the front and the green is almost a semi-island green because it has water in the front and OB behind. As you can see, this is the big water body right before the green and we've teed off from that side and it's a Quite a daunting feature when you're standing on the tee to see the flag just over the water. As you can see, that was a good shot. I have a very realistic chance for birdie. Almost had a chance for hole-in-one, but uh, the golfing gods probably have a different plan.
We are live back with our coverage from Noida Golf Course with the Delhi NCR Open presented by Nissan. And this is the challenging seventh hole. It is one of the most challenging greens at the venue. And we take a look at uh, the pro tracers. Anger there taking it off the right. A brave play with the driver on number four. Yeah, it's not something I'm very comfortable doing. Ajitesh, number five. I don't think uh, they understand the meaning of out of bounds. They don't see it at all. No, if you know it's working right to left, then you just stand and rip it because you, it's it's all about your confidence on executing that. As we see, uh, we and have... you know you can see both of them. They don't move it that much, so they're actually not starting it out of bounds. They're starting it well yeah. within the periphery of the golf course. Did you watch uh, this group on number seven? As we were discussing, uh, it, it is so difficult to get close to this flag. Uh, we, we don't see anybody in and around uh, that flag position or tier. And as uh, Ajitesh and Iskari were crossing the camera, it seems like they probably pitched it flag higher on the green, but just did not manage to stop it. So a tough flag on number seven. I don't think it's too difficult um, to actually putt at or chip at. Especially if you're over the hole, and uh, here we are doing a little golf ball searching uh, for. Yeah, I was talking things. to some uh, some people there because this is just after uh, onset of summer, and there's a lot of uh, leaves on the ground, and your ball can easily disappear. And it it uh, it it's happened with quite a few players this week. Uh, that seems to be Karan's uh, golf ball. And in Noida, the the trees are this. I don't know what that particular make of that uh, tree. Not make, I would say. I don't know what hybrid of tree that is. But they, they there's a lot of uh, leaves falling, and they're big leaves. That's that way. I always find palm tree, uh, pine trees, really easy as far as on go as golf courses are concerned because the, the leaves are so thin. You can easily spot the ball, you know. And ball spotting also is an art, <laughs> in my opinion, um, to know exactly where you hit it, how much it would go, because I feel that that does happen sometimes. And Pelayo knows they miss it in the percentage. Like it's but you know, in, in, at Noida Golf Course, the trees are so so close to each other that you can easily hit one and go backwards or forwards or sideways. You know? So you generally want to start looking for the ball at the yardage that you've you, you've flown the ball right that is probably where it is would land if you it was straight and then you have a look here and there but you know there's so the trees are so close to each other that you can you might not find See, it out this, this group is an example of exactly what uh, i was talking about when it comes to this flag position it's it's fairly unassuming you feel like there's so much uh, uh, land around the green there's so much green to work with but if you are a little over aggressive, um, as Ajitesh and Karan might have been, both of them going over the flag. They've, they've missed just that shot by at least 10 yards. And But again, if you see Angad there, he's left himself on the top tier. So he has all that downhill to contend with. It's just that landing spot to actually stop it on the right tier and get it close to this flag is very, very, very narrow. But it's so easy to prop it over the green like this. And these are two seasoned golfers, two winners on tour. Both of them making the same error on the hole. It's just this flag position is a little more tricky than we give it credit for. Yeah, it's it's you know, if, if you have a if you have a wedge in your hand and you know how fly so far you hit your wedges, it's it's you know, I'm very good with my wedges, so I like this flag. I just hit it at the flag. I know it's gonna take one hop and stop. And then I'm going to have an uphill putt coming up. That's what I've been up playing this whole. This is what I generally keep in mind. The one which is was there yesterday was a tougher one because that is you got to hit that yardage spot on. If you're two, three yards, uh, one or two yards up and down on this flag, it actually is no no big deal because as long as you know you've you you put the spin on it and you've got your yardage right. It also depends from the angle that you might be coming in. Maybe you have to play a little lower wedge or a flighted 
uh, second shot and uh, you just don't get enough spin and yeah. angad would have all this downhill to contend with you know this is a part where you 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 see a, a spot where you want the ball to go over and then let it drip drip down and gravity do its job and uh, it's, it's one thing you know for sure that you most likely won't leave this part short so which is takes care of one of the negative which is very very possible at noida golf course and was actually managing to do that they're just taking uh, a little more caution than he needed uh, and got uh, uh, unfortunately for the time being backtracking a little after that very hot start uh, of three birdies on a string and, missing and a missing a putt on number, number four, 4 and hitting it really close on, on number, number five. 5 so i am really surprised that he bogeyed that hole and uh, subsequently uh, compounding the error bogeying number 6 as well so picked up three given back to um still playing well but and uh, contrary start, to him ajitesh has started with a bogey then had a string of pars and he's gone birdie birdie five and six and those are good holes to birdie i don't think uh, this sachin basoya who's birdied number 5 i've seen too many birdies on number 5 let's have a look mm. do you think the bogey on number 5 could have uh, uh, I won't say rattle but obviously given Angela a lingering thought to go on to 6 and that just compounded it to make him yeah. a error on number 6. No he's he's gone to the 6 6 T not in the best uh, mind frame or mindset. So that's a that's... great stroke by Karan now. Very very good save on number 7 given where he was. Yeah. Karan is blemish free today so he's kept that and manu has made his second bogey of the week on number 6 so um jashas has the lead all by himself uh, at 15 under par for under the number 7 Ajitesh now uh, with the shortest putt for par on this group, and he does wonderfully. Good up and down, but aim on number seven as well. Moving on to the par five eighth. And uh, speaking of the par five eighth, we have Arjun from the right side playing his third shot. He seems to be uh, having to deal with those trees, taking it from the left side. not a very difficult flag to get at from that side not 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 the most difficult flag to actually attack from the fairway as well just over the slope on yeah, the left yeah you see missed in the right place yes he had a lot of green to contend with and uh, this is a this is a in, mm, relatively tougher flag than what we had yesterday on number 8 it was front left and uh, we saw a few eagles there This one is going to be tough to eagle today with this pin position. We have Yashas on live feed 2 playing his approach into number Seven. He's left himself quite, quite a fair, fair bit. Back, yeah, actually. yeah. It's uh, maybe a little miss it of the yeah. And box. this green is very narrow. It's it's really narrow target. It's it might be long and undulating, but it's not wide at all. So you can, if you leave yourself anything too long, you can you, you start missing it sideways. But he's found the dance floor, so he's fine. Left himself fifteen uh, feet downhill for birdie. I 
वीर रेडिटी इजियर अप्रोच इन टू नंबर सेवन फ्रॉम पोजिशन ए वन It would be interesting to see actually what Veer ends up doing given how high his ball flight naturally is. Still have to get the exact number in. Yeah, this is more about yardage control than and spin control than. And that's one yeah. one of the better shots we've seen there on number seven. So, like you see, shot. like he's he's put he's he's hit it. The you know anything two three yards plus and minus of the flag is is it's going to if it's short is going to release down if it's. Little further up, it's going to stop because there's not much slope towards the end of the green. Now a little unsure where Manu's ended up. Uh, if he's on the left or the right, all players walking towards the right um, for a little shade as uh, Arjun Prasad misses his attempt for a four. Yeah, so Number I'm eight. presuming Manu is on the left. Let's see what what he's got left. Oh, he's got that. He's on that. He's just maybe pulled it uh, a tad off the tee. This tee shot, uh, Ainish, with the with the way the trees have grown over the years, you you can barely see the fairway from where the tee box is placed right now. And it leaves no room for uh, a, a big miss hit off the tee. You yeah. can't really. I would thin it. Yeah, he's, he's rolled it up to perfection. It might just come all the way up. I think it just bounced up. Not sure if that got out of that little bunker or went back in. But if it did go back in, it is a very, very tricky, difficult bunker shot coming up for Manu. I think he's on, he's on the putting green because they had a lot of steam coming out of that bunker. I don't I mean, know. Let's see if he has change of fortune with the putter here. And he doesn't... But he's gone cold on him today. And that just lacked pace. It just had to hit it much firmer than that. You think if you miss a couple of putts like we uh, watched him miss, do you think when you give yourself another opportunity, you're just trying to really make it in? So you know what? What? what so what happens is is the, your mind is started is thinking of a result then at all times, that, and the result that you don't want, and your body reacts to that, and because of that. You start peaking and you start getting quicker with your rhythm. I think this is steel, and this is an idea. So what happens when we join them? Something marvelous, like cars that are lighter, more fuel efficient, yet safer. Thanks to high perform automotive steel, which lowers CO2 emission and makes this world a better place. Tomorrow is shaped by imagination and steel. Tata Steel. We also make tomorrow. Finishing that. So we, certainly not on the green. I think he's short. We have uh, our referee, Dr. Sujit Nagrat, uh, uh, in our screen for a brief moment there. He is pacing up and uh, probably to see where he needs to pitch it and what sort of a shot he might play. But uh, if he's not on the putting surface, this is not going to be uh, an easy up and down by any stretch of the means for uh, Manu. He's going to have to bring all his skill out for this one. He but moved it right to left. Some kind of uh, drop. Does Manu? I think he's just over the bunker. Yeah, there is a, a, a sprinkler there, from what I remember. For anybody who's uh, watching us and is a little confused by that drop, the rules have changed. It's been uh, over a year since now. Uh, drops are taken from a knee height, 
rather than a shoulder height. It's, I think, a good change. In, in when I started, actually, it used to be over your shoulder. Ah. So basically, you could not see where the ball, we were dropping the ball. All possibilities to make sure you don't get a good lie <laughs> at yeah. all. Sometimes you drop a ball on the slope over your shoulder and you don't find it <laughs> because it's, it's rolled off somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, the rules have changed over the years just to speed up play more than anything else. What do you think is a is a good uh, shot here? How, do you think inside uh, three feet, four feet, six feet, what is possible? I think uh, if I if I can if I were him and the way I've seen him chip, I would actually eliminate all that front slope. I would pitch it on top and let it release down. He's he's chipped well so far. And he's you know it's. Uh, Rolling it up, then you have to guess that extra bit of reason. He's he spitched it up and let it, you know, just came in a bit, came in a bit too low. It's just a different, and I think he's now just found the rough, and uh, the ball seems to have settled down a little, which would mean uh, getting that preferred lie, lift clean in place, might not be possible. That's not a good spot. He's just put himself in more trouble. Yeah. It's very unlike. Uh, Manu there might choose to take the putter out, actually, in my opinion. But um, you know, not just, doing him any favors after that bogey on number six. Did he take a preferred lie after that draw? He did? He did, he did. That's it's, uh, it's actually yeah. even more surprising because after that, you would assume he'd just take a lofted club and actually put it up on the slope. But uh, no, choosing to go, I, I was thinking he was going to pitch somewhere, pick the ball somewhere where your shafts is right now and let it, you know, just he's he. You know, he has, I saw him pitch at Tolly Ganji at this race. He has a soft, high pitch that he hits quite uh, comfortably and quite well. And came out a bit low, so as a result, couldn't hold the yeah, putting surface. I think why he chose that shot. Yasha's now could really put a stamp of authority here with this putt and almost making that go in as well. That would have been a big, big, big blow on the lead right there, but uh, a wonderful effort by him. Nonetheless, uh, tap and par and on to the way to number eight on the tee of a par five now. You know, uh, this is um, this is an important chip as far as momentum is concerned. You know, and Manu doesn't want to drop more than one. He's already dropped one on number six. If Manu does not uh, manage to hold this, then that is going to be for the first time in two rounds... Uh, an exchange of lead. But he is Manu Gandas. I won't put it past him if he actually uh, holds this in. Do you think... Uh, I, it, that thought did cross my mind because every time we've seen him in trouble, he's uh, come up with the goods. Yasha and we both would be watching this carefully. They would know exactly what is happening around them and what they need to do. Very well played chip though. Very, very well played. I think uh, getting a good contact on that chip was not uh, very easy, but he's yeah. made sure he's not dropping more than one shot. Now here, uh, Veer does have a birdie opportunity, which would mean that uh, he has the opportunity to actually take the lead by himself here. And uh, right before a par 5, that would be... Th this could be an, a very, very big momentum shift in his favour. He's got a little slow from right to left to contend with, though. And uh, a lot of that, those uh, light and dark patches in between him and the hole. This is probably a part of the green where you're going to be the least sure about the line you've taken. The least. Exactly. Because it's got so many different grains and contours. It's exactly it's, what yeah. happened. He just, yeah, I think he was aimed exactly where uh, he hit it and the ball just carried on the same line. You just take the line, hope it's the right one and make a really good stroke. And if you don't make it, it doesn't matter. You can, there's nothing you can do about it.
there we have it for the first time in uh, four rounds we have Manu now doing the chasing and by two strokes nonetheless he's gotten back in uh, to 13 under where he started the day he has Veer and Yashas both ahead of him now playing alongside him so Manu knows exactly what is happening which would mean that uh, Yashas is now the tournament leader at 15 under par after seven holes on day four we're following very very closely at 14 under par as well they all make their way to number eight the par five Well, Manu has opened the door for his playing competitor. Actually, they, they've, uh, they're firmly inside the house now. They might take over the house. So, a uh, little backtracking by our overnight leader, Manu Gandas. This is uh, Karan Pratap on number eight, the par five. Chipping across the whole width of the green. It's uh, the pins on the top left, and he's on the he's just missed the green on the right. Pretty straightforward chip on Ainesh. I think he's probably thinking he's going to make it. Yeah, it's a very makeable chip. Actually, he's not. He's, he's with the grain, so it makes this release of the ball more predictable. You know, since the grain is gr grows right to left on that green, so anytime you're chipping into the green how the ball is going to react once it hits the putting surface is, is uh, it's a little bit of guesswork uh, in there but once it's with the green you know it's going to you know how it's going to react once it hits the putting surface and it goes back to that same conversation of uh, making a decision it's, i think it's it's in the vicinity of making sure you know what you're doing or what you think is going to happen and just go with it and that Going with the green usually just gives you a surety of uh, what the ball is going to do once it pitches on the green. And Ajitesh now from the starting of the green there. Similar range to where uh, Rashid was on number eight. I just really admire the way Ajitesh goes about his golf. The, the whole demeanor, his posture, he just looks so natural. He just feels like he was born to do exactly this. And uh, that's a good part. Yeah, it's a really good lag up lag part on by Ajitesh on number eight. It's it's a, it's actually quite tough to get the speed right because it's severely up slope. It's a severe up slope, and then it's against the grain when it's come when when you're coming up, and then it's it's the speed changes completely. It's down grain downhill after that. Angad, this one. Uh, doesn't move right to left at all actually from what I remember it's more it actually, if anything moves left to right those uh, it's, the grain is very very strong from left to right on his part so we, it's just you can see there's a lot of discussion going on between him his caddy and him on whether the ball is actually going to move and at all or not You're yeah, also coming over the hole, so it might be slightly faster. As long as he doesn't have that light green patch to go over, he's he's fine. The moment that ball travels over the light green patch, which is a different green and a different grass altogether, it's a different hybrid of uh, Bermuda. Angad with his birdie attempt on number eight. Currently sitting at 11 under, four shots behind our leaders, our leader, sorry, uh, Yashas. I mean, you, you saw that it's, it, it moved left to right and it looks right to left. I can assure you that. 
you know, with this golf course, it's just you can you can uh, have a great roll with the putter for a few holes and just could suddenly go cold on you. You know, because um, every line reading uh, effort of yours is is a is a guess here, and then you start second guessing yourself because you've had a couple of wrong guesses. So it's, sometimes that also leads to you actually not making a very confident stroke, and then that basically means that there's no chance. Yeah. So, Karan's caddy being asked to clear our bird's eye view. Got enough of that chip shot, so... Mm -hmm. This is a very straight part. Actually, maybe right center. And that sneaks it in from the right side. No problems there for him. We go up and down on number eight. As, uh, we see there was a little wind in the morning, but the flag seems to be completely uh, unmoved now. So no wind, not much to contend with for the players. A nice pin position on number nine, top left. It's, it's a triple tiered green. We have the three tiers. It's it's like uh, climbing Mount Everest, Absolutely. base camp, <laughs> or whatever camp, and all the way up to the top. It's it's the the difference in yardage from the front to the back is almost 30, 35, 40 yards. You don't want to miss the fairway here because otherwise it, it is so difficult to actually get on the right tier on the green here. Yeah. And and it's, it, the top tier actually slopes away from you. So you need to get that yardage spot on and you have to bring it in high. You can't bring it in, in with a lower or medium flight because it's going to skid off the green and go over the back. I've been now with the part on number nine, a little more lengthy than what he's been giving himself, but the putter has been extremely cold for him today. Let's see if this changes on number nine. And this is just, Actually gave it a good run. It's just, uh, you won't be disappointed with that effort, but it's just nothing's falling for him. All pass so far. Birdie free. Birdie free. We like to put a positive Arjun spin on Pras it. Bogey free as well. Arjun, Pras Arjun Prasad is his his com his partner in this. He's also uh, birdie free and bogey free. Rashid did break out of that pack early on with a birdie on number one. I'm not sure what he's done uh, these, since. But... These, these two might be saying, okay, Rashid, tell us what you're doing. Different man. Uh, you just... Can't seem to get the line right. I think Rashid's got uh, that very can attitude of uh, see ball, see hole, make putt. You know, he he plays here almost uh, almost every day when he's in he's not playing on tour, and um, he's 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 well versed with these greens, so he's probably reading the lines much better than the others. Arjun for his birdie on number nine. He would have gotten a little read from uh, Abhinav. And just By the way, that there. short part that Angad had on number eight was for Eagle. That would have really set the cat amongst the pigeons. He would have uh, jumped straight up to uh, join uh, Manu. Manu is. And do, do you think now, you know, um, Manu, Veer, and um, Yes, uh, they're, they're playing together. So it's not like someone from the uh, back of the pack uh, or from a different group uh, has caught up to Manu. Now, I think the situation's changed to a point where now it it is Yashas's tournament to uh, take forward. Because think... they're on the same number of holes and uh, Manu finds themselves chasing. And Yashas is actually playing consistent and really well. I, I mean, they, it's still two shots. There's Veer uh, in the middle, there's Angad as well. So it, anybody could actually be taking the trophy after 18. You, but... you, you know, uh, this golf course, if you minimize your bogeys uh, or mistakes uh, and, make sh and, you, and play the par fives really well. The par fives are very, very valuable out here. Number one is a mid iron. Number eight is you're getting there with a, mid, a long iron. 
number 14 is actually a mid to a short and depends on what you hit off the tee and then 17 again you can hit the home so and and uh, if you can let's say birdie all the path uh fives that's you got four birdies there and a couple of birdies and you have these really short par fours that come in also like as f like 15 and number two which we saw veer eagle today and uh you have six birdies actually quite easily and and, and that, that's the conversation right because if yashas now let's say manages to make those routine um not very routine but let's say routine birdies and doesn't really drop a shot it makes it very very difficult for our round to actually catch up to him i don't see manu playing the way he is playing right now for too long i think he's going to he's going to pull his socks up very quickly and he's going to get back to us uh, the form that got him to the top of the pack for the first three rounds he's someone who's um, who's dealt with this enough to know how to deal with it right now uh, he's been through enough as far as leading a tournament is concerned i remember a few duel, duels with him and uh, i think it was uh, Yuvraj in a few tournaments and he came up on top on, on, top on those events so it's, it's that they've got 11 holes to go and uh, he's going to get his form back not taking anything from Yashas Yashas uh, is playing solid and Veer has been in amazing form over the last month or so but Yashas hasn't closed down the PGTI event yet which is I think He's going to be more desperate. He's going to focus more, and uh, uh, nothing taken away from Viro Manu. I think they're going to be they're as hungry as ever. Win golf tournaments, but um, I, I don't know. I think I feel like uh, I, I never knew Noida the the clubhouse was that big. It doesn't look that big if you you know walk through it. Does it? Yeah, it does. It feels like it's uh, quite. Well, ever yeah. since I've been coming to Noida, I've always enjoyed being there. The food's great. Uh, the environment's good, and uh, I've always play, enjoyed playing this golf course. I've uh, always had a good time whenever I've walked on this course. You know, it's it's probably uh, the most uh, probably the most economical place to play golf for uh, professional golfers and golfers as well. It's uh, the green fees is quite quite nominal. The food is great, and the it's. Uh, um, Golf course is a, is a good challenge as well. We have Angad on number nine, just being blocked off by the tree. So this one, he'll have to just play to the front right unless he takes it up over the trees. Yeah, it's a little tricky for him now, given the flag position on number nine. And on the screens on the left here on the par five, uh, we have Veer now. He's taking a big swipe with a wedge. Uh, maybe he's in the bunker there. Yeah, yeah the bunker that green right. side bunker. It's, but it's a, it's a relatively easy bunker shot. He's got a lot of flat surface to land the ball on. You don't have to contend with any slopes as such. Yeah, and he's done a really good job of it. He's being a little more positive. So he's going to have a three and a half, four footer coming down for his four. And I'm interested to see what Angad might do. Not sure if he's going over the trees or uh, playing a low one. He's going yeah. over them actually. Yeah, so that's those are the two choices he had around or over. He's taken the latter. He's come up a bit short, which was possible because he had to have enough loft on his club to get over the tree. That's just rolling back, which would mean he's in the first uh, level of the green. He's got two tiers to now contend with, and I've hit that part. It, it it takes a lot of skill to make sure it is anywhere around the hole. I think yeah, if he leaves himself within six feet from there, he's done an impressive job. I, I think it's a very difficult part. Uh, but Ajitesh now from um, the prime position, if he had to drop a ball, that would be where he would drop it. Yeah, he's in position A1. He's just hit it over the back. So not, not a bad spot. It's uh, pretty straightforward from there. And third member of this group. 
Karan Pratap. Let's see what KPS can come up with. See how GPS is doing today. GPS being Gaurav Pratap Singh. We have Karan Pratap and Gaurav Pratap both playing this event. And um, they had a nice duel last time. And with that, the Gaurav Pratap being the defending champion for this event. Yes, just coming up a little short from uh, the front of the green there with his putter. He's going to have a good opportunity on number eight. And Karan Pratap now from the left side of the fairway. Not entirely sure where that is. We will we'll know shortly. And our overnight night leader, Manu Gandas, with a putt coming up on number eight, the par five. Still, same body language, same routine, same rhythm. I, I'm, I'm really impressed by this whole demeanor of his. He's going to be unfailed. I think uh, it doesn't matter if he's ahead or behind. He knows what he has to do. He's going to play uh, and shoot the number that he thinks he needs to shoot. We haven't seen a lot of putts hold from this side. And uh, that's just... Sniff the hole. Un just unfortunate. Just, just almost perfect, but not enough to go in the hole. A good try. It's a, had a good roll. It, it, it there was no. It wasn't jumping at all. So maybe a little more speed, and uh, that was in. Just broke, dived a little at the end from there. So now, Keshas and Veer with their parts. That we're presuming that Keshas hit the green in two, right? On the front, and Veer was in the green side bunker with his second shot. This is a tricky read. It's actually right to left and it's left to right slope, but you have to have, you know, it's it's going to move right to left. That's for sure. But it, you can't see it. Well, that's the difficulty, I think, in Noida. It's just you need to trust that the grain is going to bring it back more, mostly, usually more than the slope, unless, of course, the slope is very severe. He seems to be aiming it uh, just outside the right, actually. Yeah, it is, that, it is going to come from right to left. And it does. Perfectly done by Yasha's dad. Yeah, that must have given him a few shortened breaths. Would have been a little nervous. I think everybody is a little nervous here, uh, standing over three, four footers, but quite uh, perfectly hold by him there. This one is actually maybe left center this is uh, a pin position that i've played, played quite a few times it's one of the flattest areas of the green you doesn't want to give uh, a lot of daylight between him and yashas now and that's uh that's also quite, uh, comfortably done for him as well so we not sure what manu made though but uh, we Fruitnik Electro Plus. Rehydrate, feel alive. काम घर में कर रहे हों या बाहर या किसी बीमारी से उबर रहे हों आप बिना जाने dehydrate हो सकते हैं. रोज़ ज़रूरत है Fruitnik Electro Plus Rehydrate. इसका अनोखा R3 formula electrolyte restore करे, glycogen replenish करे और muscles का तनाव कम करे तुरंत energy के साथ. Fruitnik Electro Plus Rehydrate. Which I've uh, carried it over the first year, so it's about three feet now, which is not bad from that. Ajitesh with a very, very simple, he's going to, he's using his uh, putter, but it's really straightforward. Not much uh, in this as far as uh, borrow is concerned. It's relatively straight putt. Avina with his birdie putt on number 10, the par 3. 
quite the surprising putt from uh, Ajitesh leaving his out quite a distance. Now been out there. Ah, just uh, agonizing day with uh, the putter for him there. He's just showing that. And, and he's hitting good putts. The, the, the golf ball is doing everything but going in the hole. Yeah, the ball been there, Abhinav. Hang in there. Just keep striking the ball like you're doing. You're going to get a few on the way back in. What a different day Hani Vasoya is having today. He was 4 over yesterday. He's 5 under today. Rashid. Six for the and uh, imagine that Rashid with the, the wedge on number 10, holding it from over the green. He's just, he's, he's showing his game partner. I don't, I, I don't need the putter. I just don't need to hit the green. I'm just going to chip it in and make birdies. Arjun cleaning up on number 10. Well, if that, that is for his uh, par, uh, then that's okay. But if that is for his birdie, he would have uh, <laughs> he would have had a thing for that car uh, with the T-shirt in the air. And uh, there's a look at that uh, from our very new sponsor, Nissan, on number 10. Well, uh, a couple of groups more to go. Six more opportunities for us to see if somebody actually wins that car. And Ajitesh now on number nine. Do you think that was the lapse of concentration or maybe the ball just uh, bounced a little from the surface because he wasn't on the green? I I, I, I wouldn't have used my putter from there because that was there was too much difference in the in the uh, speed of the two surface surfaces. He was actually not even coming from the from the apron. He was yeah. I'm surprised as well that he chosen to take the putter out, but uh, oh, really using the whole hole, yeah, coming in. As they go in, no pictures on the scorecard. Yeah, coming in from the side door. Angad with a little bit of a knee knocker coming up for par on number nine. So we have, by the way, an eagle on number eight today. Vikrant Chopra has eagled it today. We're now doing a due diligence. Uh, they would have gotten a little help from Ajitesh's part. Taking it quite a bit of time over that one, making sure he's got his thoughts clear. Does uh, I got a couple of blemishes on the scorecard, very, very unlike what we thought would have happened after the start yet. But he's still playing really, really well. He's he's uh, on a good number today, and he's still in the chasing pack. Four birdies for him, going with two bogeys in the front lines, two under. Uh, now aligning himself in the middle of the hole and a uh, good stroke by him. Our old light, night leader finds himself three adrift now. He's part number eight, but his fellow competitors have both birdied it, be as well as Yashas. Yashas yes, now on that uh, 16 under par. That's the number we were thinking about yesterday. Yeah, and with nine more to go. And uh, given how Veer is uh, aggressively chasing him as well, I think. He'll, they'll, they'll, they'll have to cross that number. And that's the updated leaderboard. Uh, Yashas Chandra now holding this tournament by the neck. Playing uh, at 16 under par, starting number 9. And Veer following him by a shot at number uh, at uh, number 9, uh, standing at uh, 15 under par. Manu now surprisingly, no damage to the score he was at uh, starting day 4. But... He he's certainly going to feel like that sitting at thirteen under par. Yeah, he's uh, three adrift now. You know, I still think uh, seventeen is the max because the 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 back nine plays a lot of crosswind. <clears throat> I would say both the par fives are very uh, very variable, but then you, you might give one back on sixteen. That is playing really tough at two hundred forty five yards. Uh, today, the par 3 16th. So, I'm still. Do you think uh, uh, Anger that 12 under par through uh, nine holes with nine remaining and the back nine 
And if the winner is going at at least 16 under, do you think he's too far back already? If the winner was to go at 16 under, do you think it's... it's... I, I think Ankit can shoot 3-4 uh, uh, under the back nine because he's, he's, he's not thinking about... He's not, he's, he won't be conservative now. So, you know, if it goes his way, he's going to, he's going to fire at every pin and he's going to be super aggressive. And if it, go, if it goes his way, he'll, he'll make a few more buddies. I, if I was uh, Yashas, I would not be as aggressive as Angad on the back nine. I would play my I, I yeah. think if uh, Yashas can play, uh, execute uh, perfectly, I would, I would imagine uh, him with a couple of birdies on the par fives. And if he can manage all powers, I think uh, he's going to seal it at 18 under par. But we don't know that. These are just uh, hypothetical uh, you know, there's that, dwellings. Yeah, it's uh, they have moved the tee up a bit on number 15. Otherwise, 15 was also playing a bit tough, having I mean, almost like a behaving like a dog leg yesterday with the tee box back and having players having to hook it around to find the fairway. But you know what I what I got to know is there were a lot of ball, uh, tee shots within forty yards of the green yesterday on number fifteen. So the ball is rolling quite a bit, and that also brings uh, makes eleven very buryable. Though it's an elevated surface, and we didn't see in many of them uh, yesterday. But in yesteryear's eleven used to be one of the more challenging holes on the golf course. Karan eyeing up uh, his tee shot on number 10, the par 3 with a Nissan up for grabs for as if you get a hole in one. So you have six people left to make sure that that car is driven away. Now we have five. A little away now. I think uh, a two putt is now going to concern uh, Karan. It's not that the car is out of the question for him. This is a Ajit-ish kind of hole. Mid to short iron. He's really accurate with them. And then we have the, the trees starting to ruffle a little bit as well. So as we move towards the business end of the tournament, uh, the wind decides to show up as well and now he's only got eyes for this flag um he's got to you know he's got to fire at every flag coming in those two bogies back-to-back -back bogies have set him a bit of drift of our leader yashas yeah Looks like he's fired at the flag. He's uh, missed it on the right. Coming up in short of that spring club. Manu making his way towards the green on number nine. Interesting to see where he's hit his approach. So, Ajitesh, now let's uh, let's. Better than him giving this a good run. Yeah, he's, he's, this is his kind of hole. He's, he's really good with this uh, length of approach. I feel at nine on the bar, it's uh, practically lights out for him uh, when it comes to uh, having a say for the trophy, but a hot back nine, he can have a low finish. It looks like he missed it to the right as well, not too far. Okay. Uh, one of the better tee shots, especially in this group. So he's going to have a very, very good look at birdie there on number 10. So this is a little misleading because uh, the flag is actually surrounded by uh, a lot of taller trees. Um, this green isn't very exposed, I feel. But the trees behind you can see that they're, uh, they are moving. They are uh, subject to a little more wind. Yeah, but relatively less compared to yesterday. Yesterday was a little more gusty. You can see the scoring is also much lower today, Ainish. The leaders were, they were like one or two under after nine yesterday. Both of them are four under after nine today. 
I think it could also attributed to the flags being a little more accessible today. <clears throat> Manu, just narrowly missing the green on number nine. <clears throat> Straightforward chip coming up. He's looks like he's elected to use the putter. Yashas coming have on the long tier of the green is in the middle tier. The pins placed on the top tier today. This is a three tiered green. Sitting at 16 under leading the tournament. Spotted very well today. Really good speed by our leader Yashas Chandra. Bringing himself a very easy tap in for par on number nine. And this is on live feed two. We have Angad playing number 10, the par three. We are playing leaf, lift, clean, and place. That's preferred lie for others, if you don't know. So that was Anger taking his preferred lie on number 10. Unlike what club golfers do, uh, professional golfers, once your fingers leave the ball and if they, while taking a preferred lie, you can't replace it. If the ball's back in play. Angad, straightforward chip on number 10. Giving a really good run, coming up a wee bit short. You can see that he's, his mindset is to stay aggressive. Trailing Yashas by four strokes. Currently, we're finishing up on number nine. He's a shorter drift of our leader. Karan Pratap with a lengthy body putt on number 10. It's got a good three two, three feet of break on it. Manu coming up short on number nine. Yeah, he still got the honor. Um, that was for his birdie on number nine. Adipesh now taking his time uh, going through his routine on number 10. And a very wonderful tee shot uh, for Bari Manu now for his pa going through his routine. And uh, he's hold that. So Manu's going to find himself uh, with nine holes left on day four chasing Yasha Senvir. And that's wonderfully done by Ajitay Sandhu. It's a great birdie for him moving up to 10 under par for the, the tournament. A good way to start the back nine. Kind of now quickly moving into uh, cleaning up for his par number 10. So, does so. 
moving to number 11. Couple of decisions on number 11 for players. They could choose to uh, tapping it in, would be our tournament leader. Yashas, number 11 is an interesting haul. Um, you could choose to take it over the hazard, but you need a good solid strike. Or you could play it short and uh, go in with a shortish mid iron to the green as uh, we take a, a look at number 11. Abhinav Rohan, he's just, uh, he's just, I think he's played brilliantly. He's, he's hit really good iron shots, really good drives. And he's he's actually hit really good putts as well. It, they just haven't fallen, and um, I'm just hoping that uh, that changes soon. Maybe it starts at number eleven. Not to be coming up a little short. Maybe the fringe that uh, took up most of the speed. Rashid now from under the hole already uh, running with a couple of chippings today. And uh, under borrowing on the break there. So he's going to miss out um, on probably was uh, for a three on number 11. There's that big, big, massive tree that covers the entire fairway on number 11. So, if you had a good high ball to fly that hazard and that tree, I mean, I'm now giving it uh, a proper look. Uh, these uh, the, these putts, these two, three photos, four photos um, in uh, Noida Golf Course, we've seen since yesterday and uh, I'm sure in the first two days as well. They're just tricky. They're not as straightforward. So, I mean, I'm just giving that uh, little extra look. He holds it out. The last thing he'd want is to be uh, a few feet away and three putting it. But not doing so. Moving off the 11, moving on to the 12th. There's a slow motion swing of. Uh, Multiple tournament winner, or a merit winner, Asian tour winner, Rashid Khan. And Abhinav Lohan with uh, his driver on team number 9. Yeah, you can see um, the difference in technique. I just love the way. Arjun keeps his center so steady out and it's really really good through the ball lots of lag in that golf swing you know one of my one of the really good uh, traits that you want to see in your technique if you want to improve is how steady your center can stay that is your spine this the, the lesser the movement the more consistent you're going to be as far as uh, the starting line of the shot is concerned and your uh, connection with the golf ball so the, uh, if you if you compare yourself to the pro then you'll see okay you know my center is if it's moving around in the back swing try to fix it if it's moving in the down swing try to fix it again because the steadier you stay, the lesser the moving parts, the more consistent you can be. And now Yasha is on number 10 with the honor. Yeah, Yasha, you can see very tall and, you know, yeah, more steady through the shot. Slight pull for him there, but nothing to worry about. The heart of the green. You know, it's much it's a, better effort than yesterday. It's a very easy putt from there. This is probably the easiest place to hit the putt on that flag today. The flag is almost middle, middle back uh, part of the green, a, a little bit to the right. 
So center is once you want to finish the ball and it's, it's, uh, it's a very easy, very little break on that part. We uh, seems to be taking a more aggressive line. Yeah, and he's oh, just, wow, he just hit a perfect tee shot. That must have looked like a Nissan. That must have, he was probably going to go uh, reach out for the keys there. But uh, coming up very, very slightly short, if uh, you could call it that. A wonderful tee shot for him. And this is the last try at the Nissan for this event. A 2022 Order of Merit winner, Manu Gandas. Well, that'd be a great highlight, though. The last opportunity to get the yeah. car and win the car, and uh, uh, Manu happens to avail it. We can only hope he does. Yeah, he's um, he's steadied the ship a bit. He's um, he's some uh, he's he's a player. You you know, he's sure of himself. He's a really good. He's a good. He's got a very very makeable part coming up. So it's a brilliant tee shot following Veer like that and then knowing that he's chasing the pack. That's just uh, wonderfully done. It was very, very impressive those two ball shots by Veer and uh, Manu. And it's also, you know, this tee shot, you're, you're very, uh, it's very protected, that tee box. And you, if there's any wind, you can't feel it. So you don't want the honor on that tee box. You want to see what the other person's ball is doing in the air, how much the wind is affecting it. To be fair as well, uh, this flag position today is uh, very accessible as well in comparison to uh, some of the flag positions on this whole. Not tricky, they, they can be, but uh, can't take away from the quality. Hi, Manu. Yes. Ask you the first question. Uh, the mon monument behind. Yeah. Uh, which year was it made? I actually have no idea. But to take Maybe a, a guess, day. yeah, I I'll say around thirteen or fourteen hundred. Okay. Or eighteen hundred. I'll, I'll switch <laughs> that. I'll, I'll switch that to eighteen hundred. Around eighteen hundred. What is the full form of Noida? I know the first two, uh, like New Oak Club. Okay. Uh, okay. New Oak Club, Industrial uh, Development Authority. Yeah. Mm, I think that's right. Yeah. I think that's right. Full form of NCR. NCR near Capital Region, which is the tallest minar in Delhi. Kutub Minar? That's 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 the that only minar right. I know of. Original color of red foot. Red foot. Ah, no idea. I always thought it's red. Nearest metro station to Hard uh, of Course. This I know. Because I read it somewhere. It's a um, uh, Noida Golf Course metro station. Correct. <laughs> yeah, it's right in front. Final look at uh, both friends, both competitors, and both in the leader group. Yeah. And both of them chasing the same guy, uh, Yashas Chandra. Well, uh, Yashas knows he's, uh, he can't relax today. He's got to keep his game plan, keep making good swings, attack on flags he's comfortable on, play, play his percentages correctly. Because these two gentlemen are not going to take the pedal off the metal. As we have it, uh, anybody joining us now, we are now getting to the business end of this tournament, the final nine on day four. We popularly call it the final nine on Sunday. In our case, it's the final nine on Saturday, as Karan uh, seems to be pitching a little short of the green on number 11, probably took a driver out till then, and Yashas with his birdie attempt coming up a little short. Similar to where Karan left it, he's, uh, he's, I don't think he's going to go tap it in. He's going to mark that out. Yeah, this is a really 
straightforward pitch on number 11. And um, if you can take on that water hazard, you can get really close uh, to this green and makes it uh, makes the hole much easier than it is. You know, I personally always chosen to take, take, take a drive because under no circumstance is that hazard in play for me. Yeah. So even if I miss you it, can hit a the four right over that water. Uh, a little stretch. It, maybe if I tear off the front tees, uh, not of the back, definitely. But it just it's just easier once you're ahead of the hazard. Even if you hit a little right or left, you always have a shot to at least get close to the green. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And you know, uh, once you fly that uh, that hazard, the ball's going to run another 30, 40, 50 yards Absolutely. at least. And then you have like a 50, 60 yard into an elevated green, but the green is against you. So it's going to stop the moment it hits. Now, this part uh, uh, is just to make Yasha's now sweat a little bit. He's got it. And he's done. He's done wonderfully there. Now, Veer joins Yasha's at 16 under. Stamping his name on the leaderboard quite uh, evidently. Now, Manu needs to keep pace. Manu, uh, uh, he, he's, we, we won't beg him to miss this one. And you know what? He's not even thinking of keeping pace. He's just thinking, okay, I need to make a good, uh, get the, read it the way I see it. And then stroke it the way I know I can. And that's about it. It's almost like he approaches it the way Tiger Woods uh, approached the Masters when he won on Sunday. It was like, I'm not going to go do anything at all. I'll just do my thing and I'm going to trust that that's enough. Yeah. I think Manuj is one of those players. He, he just focuses on what he's doing. And uh, I might have misread that. That looked like it, it, the role was really good. I think it was a good stroke. I think he just... You know, you didn't need to worry. He was he was three shots adrift starting this. Only still three shots adrift. Only thing there are two people ahead of him. So there's nothing nothing has changed as far as numbers are con is concerned. He need he knows that he needs to make birdies, and he's giving himself good chances. It, it will at some point, you know, turn around and start uh, start making some putts. But he's going to feel like he's uh, letting out a bit because now the uh, combined total of that group is nine under par with Manu contributing uh, no red numbers to that. Yasha said four under for the day, Veer at five under for the day. So Manu is definitely going to feel like he's he's missing out um, on the opportunities there. You know, I was watching the Valero Texas Open that Akshay Bhatia won, uh, won and he was six shots ahead and nine was to go. Didn't make a bogey, actually made three birdies or two birdies and Denny McCarthy birdied eight of the last nine holes so it's never you know it's never over till it's over that's I'm a firm believer of that and uh, I agree Manu, this, this Manu has the capability of going low so he can never count himself out of it Ajitesh fresh of that birdie on number 10 You got another easy buddy putt coming up here on number 11, which he will oh, narrowly miss. That lip has seen so much action. All all, all the uh, lip outs in Noida Golf was just so brutal. You can see how much uh, the grain makes the golfers think, right? Karan choosing the aggressive option of the tee, pitching it up to here, which, uh, in my opinion, was uh, a definite 8 out of 10. This is uh, left in. Maybe left maybe left edge. Definitely left to right. I think being uphill on this screen does help. Um, you can hit the green. Uh, you can hit the putt firm on this hole. You know, uh, Ajitesh had a lot of borrow on his putt. He, it was not, it, though it was eight feet, it had at least, you can see it's, le, it's left yeah. edge, you know, it's left to right from there. Just letting it out there. I mean, it just broke. It's similar to what Rashid did. Uh, just under reading this one. So the aggression of the team not entirely paying off, but 
Walking off with a par, never hurts your number 11. Yeah, Angad has got a little bit of work left for his par on number 10, uh, 11, sorry. Yeah, that's probably how much it's going to break. It, it does move a lot left to right, this part. But uh, I'm with Chima there, sitting pretty at uh, 12 under par. Still in with a shout, in my opinion. I feel he's gonna bird. He he needs to birdie uh, one of the one of these holes, 11, 12, 13th. Definitely um, get a birdie or eagle on number fourteen, and then then we have uh, a very very interesting last few holes. But it's, this it's needs fun. to go in first. <laughs> I think he's had a good read from. Yeah, it's a good read. And he still doesn't hit it high enough. Actually, he just ran out of pace. Anish I had the right read on it. Yeah, so that was a really bad first part. He was just over the back. He just uh, was out on the strokes gain uh, scenario. He has lost more strokes on the first part than the second part. I'll first look at uh, number 14, if I'm not wrong. There's yeah. a confident strike for GPS and then... Another heartbreaking uh, replay of this part. He knew it was a little soft. It it never looked in. It left this part. Yeah. It just never looked. It was high enough. And, uh, the spectator there is probably in the firing range of a few drives. Yeah, definitely. Uh, these for sure. Yes. And I think it's uh, Manu teeing off, so I'm assuming he's going with the iron. He's, uh, he's off. going with the iron, uh, ironish, so he's laying it up. You think uh, it's the right play for him? Well, um, you know he's done that over the last few days, so I guess he's going to stick to his game plan. He's he's not going to change. I don't think Manu changes his game plan at, at all. He he backs himself. He knows this is what I'm capable of. I don't think he's backing himself to carry that tree. Maybe the water. Manu Maybe does play, uh, uh, I mean, he has the ability to hit it uh, uh, in any ball flight, but he usually prefers a slightly mid to low ball flight with the driver um, that we have on the leaderboard. Uh, Yashas and Viralavat separating themselves from the back uh, quite comfortably. Angad falling back a shot at 11 under par. Uh, he's got eight more holes to, seven more holes to have a say, uh, rather, and uh, Manu there at 13 under par. He has some catching up to do. I, I think it is more catching up to do than uh, waiting for them to fall back because even if one of the leaders falter, the other ones are not going to. I think both of them are not going to come back to the field. So if Manu wants to have... Uh, something to do with the tournament but the end he needs to be the one to pick up shots i think 17 uh, 17 will get you into a playoff and 18 will win good score at the end there's no wind today you don't have to guess the yardage on those tight holes in the back nine the greens are small on the back nine so sometimes you get foxed with, with, when the wind switches Especially on 12 and 13, you'll see a lot of misjudgment as far as yardage is concerned. But not today. Today, there's very little breeze. So, it, club selection is that much easier. That's uh, the look of uh, the 18th hole. Number 420 yards long. It has that water hazard on the left that placed there perfectly. So, two choices of the tee. You want to take it on and hug the right side of the fairway or you want to hit something just short of it. That's a great example of uh, you don't need a large water body to actually make a difference, a small one in the right place. Let me tell you, you know a the trick. funny story. I was I just turned pro and I went to play a tournament in Meerut and they have a water hazard very similar to that on the first hole, which on the practice round day had no water in it. So I said, okay, it's perfect. I'm going to hit it, you know, 
even if it goes in there's no water in it but they filled it up overnight <laughs> <laughs> and i hit the water pole in the hazard and like where did the water come from brutal a first look at shorya bhattacharya today on number 18 Just a little forgetful the stroke is. Yeah, it's uh, you can see that over the years from all the top dressing that comes on the green that the edges become like saucers, right? Yeah, my apologies. Yeah. It's uh, hole number 13 rather, not 18. And uh, first look at Jairaj. only left handed winner on tour i like uh, coming up with that uh, every time i see him on screen yeah he's probably the most famous of all uh, left handers is uh, phil mickelson but actually he's a right handed but uh, he does exactly. most mo- mostly everything else right handed and then you have a couple of uh, really famous uh, uh, Ma- there's bob charles who's won a couple of I think he won a British Open and a US Open, and you have Mike Weir, Mike Weir. Yeah, and then you have Bubba Watson, who's won two Masters also. Yeah, we have most recent major winner in Brian Harmon, also left-handed. Yeah, he's left-handed, yeah. So left-handers have been have done well over the past few. First look at Sartre as well in four days. Uh, an aggressive putt there on number thirteen, running it by a little bit. but i think i i'll have to uh, just because you said uh, 17 under is going to be play off i'm going to go a stroke ahead uh, i'm going to say 18 under is going to be play off and 19 is going to win it outright okay uh will um, that'll be interesting to see at the end cuz um i think um i feel at like 18 under i'm practically ruling manu out because that's five strokes that he would have to gain well i won't rule manu out at all because you know he's giving himself chances and i know that he's backing himself he's not he's not like he's he has to shift up a gear or something it is his gear you know it's not it's just not falling in place is this the scenario right now if we had to go for a for a premature uh, prediction who are you going to pick to be the winner today peter lord i was going to go with the same yeah because you know he is in form jashas is playing well but beer has the confidence of that runner up finish at uh, uh, the indian open eagling the last hole he knows he can bring up the tools when needed you know that getting it done and no and, and then the belief system is far different than what you think you can do so veer has that act for sake veer has that confidence in him after that indian open uh, result i'm going to agree with you because he's done before he's won before um he's uh, he's he's had had his stint in asia he's come back and he's proven that he can uh, turn up any golf course and just perform with the run in form as well and uh, and he is having the better round today so uh, and he's got the exact same number of holes left as uh, yashas so if right now i i had to pick someone out of the pack to win it would be veer and uh, here's a look at veer um manu seems to have uh, hit his second just over the back over the back it's not a bad place to be but can you can if you see it it must have looked really good in the air he has he's, feel he's it's, covered the flag it's not a bad place to be but i think it's it's just very tricky to actually make that putt from there it because you go uphill with the uh, fringe till, till that first cut of rough is there and then it's downhill to the flag so i think judging the speed is difficult but because the greens aren't too fast it's 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 not too difficult to to have a, a regular two putt i just think it's 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 very tricky to actually make a three from there yes yeah, yeah. on the other hand uh, 
reducing the amount of strings he has to deal with, choosing to play with a little more side slope than the first cut of rough. Yeah, just trying to figure out whether he's coming closer or not. I don't think he is. Um, that's an approach shot coming into number 13. Where's that number 12, actually? It's number 12. Veer would be first uh, with his attempt at birdie. Taking enough break from the left. We've seen players, almost everybody missing it under the hole. It should be enough, actually. Maybe not. Is this going with the trend as well? And he gave it a good uh, whip. He's got a tester coming back. That is uh, one that one turns the two, two, two and two and footers. Three footers yeah. Yeah. That's not a nice two footer. I've, I've had it. A it is more. so easy to actually just uh, leave it soft handed and just miss it to the left. Yeah. Coming from all the hole, choosing uh, the putt. But you know, at DLF, uh, he played uh, he played well at the Indian Open. You have two footers that break a lot also. They're like. They, there's so much of slope on those greens. It's not from the grain, it's from the slope. Out here, it's breaking from the grain. Out there, it's, it's all slope. I won't put it past Manu holding this putt. I have a really sneaky suspicion that he's going to do it. I think it's going to be very, very one of the more impressive strokes of the tournament. He actually does it from there because um, not only he has to contend with uh, the first cut of rough, the fringe, and then the green. He's coming uphill on the first half of the putt, and then it's going to turn downhill in the second part. His walk has suddenly changed from letting it happen to no. making it happen. Exactly. You can see that thing in Manu's walk. It's, it's a little different right now. There's a little more uh, aggression in it. I think players like Manu and uh, we especially are top two as we look at Yasha's first. Oh, that was That's really good. Short. Um, it was on line, just leaving it a tad short. I think with players like Manu and we, they don't care about uh, finishing second or third. I think it's it, if they're not winning, they don't they're not too bothered. So um, at this in this position, I don't think he's gonna think just to cozy it up for a four and then move on and see what you can do there. I think he's just thinking, I'm going to start making and being aggressive here. Ajitesh finds himself in a funny position on number 12. Yeah, he's in the left trees and he's hit his approach into that left bunker. Not a good, not a bad place to uh, be in as far as getting it up and down is concerned. Actually, I can see it. Manu is taking dead aim, buddy. I think and I could see it, and then uh, I could see it. I could, like I had this really sneaky suspicion he was going to do that. I think for me that has to be one of the shots uh, of uh, the tournament. I, I think I've been on that spot. It's it's not easy, but he made it look easy. Well, there's a reason why he's there. There's a reason. It was why he's not. In the last it, it, it was the, actually that part had the least amount of line on it. This one has more line than, than, than that part. This small two footer that we just finished up. And it also missing the green on uh, number 12. Also pushing it past the flag. Yeah, because this is this is a green where the grain is going the other way around. It's it's the, the grain goes from T to green. It's uh, it's a down grain chip rather than normally you have green sloping from back to front. The grain is back to front. This one is the other way around. So when it comes up the slope, it actually gathers space. Yeah, evident by where uh, Ajitesh and Angad ended up with their... Those are, those are slow parts coming up. Mm, look at that beautiful part by Manu. Actually, it, it, it was fairly uh, Straight. straightforward with the yeah. break. Yeah. He just had to get the speed right. Correct. Which he did. Quite comfortably. So he's, you know, he's still well and truly in it. KPS coming up a little short and under the hole. Marking it, uh, which would mean that he has. Uh, about two, three feet left for his far.
Hello, Jitesh. Sizing up what he's got left for power on number 12. He's, uh, he's playing well today. Started with a bogey, but uh, three birdies thereafter. Two under for today. Ten, ten under for the tournament. Abhinav. Okay, he's uh, three sixty five. Jite, that's uh, see, that seems to be the way he likes to hold parts, but he is holding parts using the whole hole. Angad got a good uh, read on that as far as uh, the, the way the grain is going to affect the part is concerned. Yeah, the first part of the. I, I have not seen this pin oh. position at uh, on thirty never. This it's is a very, position. very new it's pin position. It's a difficult one as well. It's right over the bunker. Yeah, so it's a, it's a pin when you know that you're coming in that you need to hit it past the hole. And probably once you hit it past the hole, the, the putt gets actually easier on, on number 13 because it's it comes down grain then. I'm not getting that read off Fajitesh, but not executing it as he did. So that's going to be a disappointing bogey. Let's see if uh, Abhinav and Arjun have broken their birdie and bogeyless streak. Abhinav is still birdieless. Arjun has had a couple of bogeys, not trending in the right direction. GPS is playing well today, mm -hmm. he is uh, birdied 11 and 12. So started the back line with three threes. I'm going to have number 13. And good to see uh, some of the golfers playing well as well. Other than the leaders, we have uh, uh, Karan Pratap Singh, who's uh, also bogey free, two under par for the day. We have Dhruv Sharon, four under par for the day, playing bogey free as well. Uh, we find Harinder Gupta, three under for the day. And uh, Hani yeah. Besoya uh, makes a little bogey. On number five, but uh, four under for the day nonetheless. And uh, Satak Talwar, uh, he's been in and around the leaderboards a few times since last year, is three under par for the day. So he's catching up on the field as well. So there are some scores out there. And current uh, our friend the Punker is under par today as well. He's had an eagle on 14. Lots of reds and blues in a scar today. He's. Uh, just doubled uh, number three to go one under. He was three under uh, playing 12. So we have a couple of uh, foreigners playing uh, in our, who've made the cut who are playing uh, oh, in this event, Kevin, Steve Rikal, he's he's uh, three over today. He's seven over to, for the tournament. Matias Dominguez, he's the Latin American uh, America amateur champion. He uh, is one of he had a prolific amateur career. He's one over and two over for the tournament. Then we have Michelle Ortolani. Am I getting the pronunciation correct? I think it's more uh, Mikhail. Mikhail Artelani? Yeah. Okay. And uh, he's par today and 1-0 for the tournament. 
and then we have Badal Hussain from Bangladesh who is uh, one under and two under for the tournament. Badal has been very consistent though this year. He's had a few uh, top 15 finishes already. Now we have the leaderboard uh, with Veera Lawat and Yashas Chandra sitting at uh, 16 under par and the fresh birdie made by Manu Gandas on number 11 putting himself two shots behind uh, the leaders and a sh one, one stroke under par finally today He's in red numbers for the day and uh, Angad Chima and Ajit Sandhu rounding out the top five at uh, 11 under par and 10 under par. Suddenly the top five is also slowly separating itself from the uh, rest of the field. Ajitesh too clear of Karan Pratap Singh, uh, his playing partner, Karan Pratap at 8 under par. With but that's uh, going to so change. Uh, Angad has bogeyed number 12, so he's going to fall back to 10 under. So it's uh, 16, 16, 14, 10, 10. And uh, a little bit of daylight between uh, this leading pack and the chasers. So... But hey, unlike Noida, usually it's uh, uh, barely double digits and everybody's... The greens, the, the greens are playing uh, much uh, better softer. this year. Softer, actually. Then Noida Golf Course, when the greens get hard, the targets are so small, it's hard to keep the ball on the putting surface. The, the trophy everybody is uh, playing for... Uh, 100-odd players started this tournament uh, on Wednesday to... Grab that and, of course, a big check as well. Yeah, this uh, this sponsor for this event has changed uh, over the years. I remember playing it as, uh, I think it was Sri Padampat Singhania Noida Open. The first time I played it in uh, the early 2000s. And of course, uh, we have some very supportive sponsors on tour. We have uh, Tata Steel, Nissan, a very new sponsor, Bisleri, Electro Fruitnik Plus, Rolex, and then there are some PGTI partners we have in Golf Plus, Athletic Drive, and Golf Design India. So, quite the prestigious mix of sponsors and support the tour has as we watch on our screens the leader group uh, making their way on number 12, followed by an eager crowd as well. And that, that is just on the uh, fairway right behind then. I'm sure there are some on the sides and uh, some of them following some other groups uh, with their favorite players playing in those groups. So we are striding along, uh, chest out, strong, long strides with his caddy. Seems to be walking maybe over the game. Reed has his friend on his back this week. And two golf balls there. Uh, two players uh, hitting, missing the green by hitting Both the goals. leaders. I think Jashas is the other one. Uh, out there and uh, it's a tight chip from there. It's, uh, but not the, not the toughest because the pins on the right and they missed it long and left. So they have a fair bit of green to work with. You can see that they have enough uh, landing space, but um, Manu now giving himself uh, what is makeable for him, and he's going to get a really good read on the speed of this putt that he's coming. He's going. He has coming up. He usually doesn't need a read from anybody, but uh, certainly if he gets a little help, I, I think Manu's one of those players. If he knows exactly what the putt is doing, his execution is near perfect all the time. So. Uh, something to think of for them. And I feel uh, nobody at this point uh, can afford to drop a shot, in my opinion. I think it's, it's a game of now just picking up birdies and hoping you pick up uh, at least one more than your playing partner. Yeah. You know, with the, with the cameras on phone, a lot of cameras in play right now. Members getting a good view on how pros hit a particular shape or sh shot. Pretty straightforward. You didn't have, there's a, 
you know, you choose your mark and you choose the flight you want to hit and you just hit your mark and then, you know, so nothing fancy needed out here. Let's see if he's chosen his mark correctly. And then he has, so he's going to give himself a very chip shot. You know, uh, and you can see how the grain is actually contrary to the slope. It's right to left grain. So the ball actually turned right to left. So Manu has a fair idea of how the ball is going to react around the hole. Do you think maybe Veer is now thinking uh, he can hold this? You know what I like just now? <clears throat> Yashar's not taking mm, any extra time than what he usually takes. He's, it was just, he saw what he had to do and he just made a decision and he stuck to it and he executed it. So that's probably shows that he's uh, in control of his nerves right now. I have a feeling Veer is uh, fancying to hold this one. Mm. Takes it a little further right, uh, just not gonna, giving it enough speed. Um, but he's not going to have uh, any drop strokes on this hole. So up to Manu now. Can he pick up another shot on the boys playing alongside him? I think he will. I have a, another sneaky suspension, a suspicion he, he's going to make this part. And you know, once you, you make one, you feel you can make everything. You know how this works with momentum as far as golf is concerned. So he can, he's got no fringe to deal with here. He's on yeah, the he's, surface and he knows what the putt is doing. Yeah, he's got a good uh, idea of how it's going to move around the hole. So I'm that one makes it. I'm going to feel like I've uh, had eight shots of uh, espresso. I'm going to be very excited to see how this uh, entire tournament uh, unravels and finishes. Yeah, you know, same same feeling I had on the last hole as far as his putt is concerned. He's He's got a really good idea of what he's going to do. Definitely aimed outside yeah. the right. I think it's a matter of getting the speed right. He's taking that one final look. And he generally gets the speed right. You know, he hasn't hit it hard, hard enough. He ran out of steam. I think he, it just seemed like he's getting so focused on the line of the putt, which does happen sometimes. You just get so involved with the exact line you think you have to take, you just sometimes forget to stroke it. Yeah. Maybe um, in the whole uh, thought process of getting it starting on line, he forgot to hit it. It's a par for him nonetheless. Uh, I think we can give him the benefit of the doubt. It was uh, over uh, 23, 24 feet. <laughs> it's okay if he doesn't make that putt. He still has a few more opportunities coming up. But uh, as far as Veer and uh, Yashas are concerned, I feel they, they know that um, just making pars is not going to be enough. Uh, going uh, up to the 18, they will have to pick up... Uh, a shot or two at least because uh because manu will i tell you what <clears throat> the par five, uh, par five 14th is going to be really crucial as far as manu is concerned because he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna try to eagle it and mm. our leaders are gonna you know just play the percentage and you know most likely walk off with a with a birdie Ajitesh hitting a really good approach on number 13. Probably the closest we'll see today. <clears throat> Ajitesh is just dialing in now. Now from where they where they hit that tee shot, the, that pin must be looking like it's placed inside the bunker. It's uh, 13 is three from the left, three yards from the from the fringe. Barely legal. Barely legal. I think the limit is three, right? Three. Yeah. So. I think so with uh, Charlie deciding that uh, usually number 13 is considered to be unlucky. So let me put that so flag. Look at, look at this, uh, Ainesh, the last few holes. Three from the left, four from the right, three from the left, seven from the right, 
four from the right, six from the left. And so, that seven from the right is on uh, number 16. So that's not generous that's, that, by that's, any means. That is in the corner. <laughs> that, that, that's as, as close to the corner as you can get on that hole. And 17, four from the right, which is, it'll look like the pin is inside the bunker. Yeah. Why, Mr. Sambachari, why? Why are you doing this and to the on, on 15, it's top left next to the wall. Well, it makes for interesting viewership for us. I mean, yeah. it just impresses us more, us more if they make uh, birdies on these flag positions. Um, I think uh, these flag positions actually suit Manu more. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, if, if the leaders, uh, that's Yashas and B, just play the percentages and let Manu go for it. If he does, he does. But don't come out making bogeys from there you know they're still relatively not they're not lengthy holes they're just tough pin positions so if you can just leave yourself 15 10 15 20 footers and and come out if you make one you make one if you don't you you know you make pass still i'm just hitting it a little uh ahead of the hole i think he's just trying to force the issue right yeah. now he's uh he's he finds himself a little far more far behind the leader than he wanted. He's uh, 10 under right now, tied with Ajitesh. Karan, we haven't seen one putt being made on this flag position yet from anywhere, really. Good way to protect the putting surface, just put the flag next to the edges. You can protect the putting surface. It's a good way to keep the members happy. Mm -hmm. This, you know, sometimes I feel there's no harm letting pros birdie holes and, you know, if they hit a good shot they and birdie a hole, they, they do, right? I think so. I think the course designs are challenging in itself um, enough, but uh, no, it's, it's three. It's three from the, the the from the left, but the left is a false, like a yeah. false left, like it's a it's it's saucer shaped. So basically, it's two two yards. Angad with his par attempt on number 13. And uh, holding it comfortably. That uh, three part there would have hurt uh, a lot. So yeah. thankfully not to be for him. Uh, Abhinav Lohan there, I think, on uh, number 14 from the bunker. Yeah, it's it's a good place to leave yourself that bunker it's, because you can you can spin it from there. I would actually want to take an extra club and hit it over the back and leave myself up in uphill chip on that hole. But we can see on uh, number fourteen as well. It's like tucked right back in the corner, and uh, even from the fairway, you 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 might feel it's uh, not really accessible. Um. There we have Ajitesh trying to uh, take his, I think, three or four footer, and he does. That moves him to 11 it. under. If he can finish in a flurry, you never know. He's 11, needs at least five more. And he's what? He's got at least needs to get there. Yeah. Anybody, I think 16 is, 16 I feel is still out of the question now. and. Uh, have to get to 17. Arjun now trying to contend with those two slopes and just mm, coming up short. Just uh, a little more check spin than he would have hoped. And now he finds himself uh, a good part of 20 feet, maybe 22 feet for his four. Yeah, that was uh, quite disappointing. Uh, he's, he's, his chipping is quite on song. 
It's uh, quite the hat sporting uh, group amongst the caddies in this one. Mm-hmm. Rashid now quickly onto his ball. He doesn't waste time uh, at all. Yeah, he's he's ready to pull the trigger. In the front half of the green, giving it a whack from there, and also coming up short. So he he has his work cut out as well. Yeah, he's he's made two bogeys on the back nine, and he's he feels like he's uh, lost his chance to you know win. It. And he's 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 the kind of player if he's not winning it, he's not interested. So he's even par today. Six under for the tournament. Lying in eighth position, tied with a whole bunch of other people. Harinder, Dhruv Sharon, Shorya Bhattacharya. Oh, at six under as well. Or you know, uh, he's going to feel like he's dropped a shot here if he doesn't make this part. Yeah, but this, you know, he's left himself too much work. I'm just not giving it an break. It's difficult to actually aim it far enough left from that side. So his caddy, he's, he's a local caddy, that he actually caddies uh, and plays himself and he, he does at least 36 holes a day. Either he's caddying or he's playing. So really good with his lines. World of experience, uh, especially if I'm not a golf course on Arjun's bag, but uh, just the execution has not been uh, that great today. Abhinav is being birdie and bogey free today. He's had all pars. He might want to break that. He says, this is a really realistic look at birdie. That That is a mini burn and a mini compliment altogether in one sentence. Yes. I'm hope I'm hoping he makes this let's, part. Let's myself. hope he breaks the chain here and uh... Bisleri, drink it up. Like, you know what, I think I've missed it and he finally makes yeah, it. Yeah, misread it, but miss. Uh, he's shaking the head, but he's happy. He's he's content with that result. Uh, well done, Abhinav. First birdie today. All pass before. And Rashid is just going to step up to it and hit the center. No, center no doubt for him. Yeah. I mean, uh... He, he, he probably would have said for fun, he could have just taken the wedge out and hold it. He must be giddy after every tournament. He's just bogey, birdie, bogey, birdie, bogey, birdie, pa. You know, like there's uh, so much of uh, hap stuff happening while he's playing. I just feel it's a near impossible place uh, uh, Did to you get say to, but I, I think I spoke too soon. Yeah, he's. I'm forgetting who I am uh, commentating on. The okay. sixth time winner in a year and an order of merit winner. It was Manu Gandas and he did not have that angle or the lie going for him from that first cut, but uh, brilliance. Yeah, he had that, uh, he, he, you know, it pitched into that false front uh, that that green has and it just killed its pace. And now he's got a, like, it's, you can almost give it to him. He can kick it in from there. I think if anybody questions uh, Sampachari for the flag position, he's going to just show a highlight reel of that shot and no, say and it's accessible. And agitation. And agitation, yeah. It's, oh, it's, it's accessible. You see one golf ball uh, coming up a little short there as well. Uh, not uh, too much of a troubling position, but Manu now putting his foot on the accelerator and saying that uh, you guys thought you guys have overtaken me, but... I've got a lot of gas in the tank and I've got a lot of acceleration. Not sure where your chassis is on this hole. Hmm. 
Manu striding up to the 13th green. Two shots adrift, but that's going to change very quickly. He's uh, sitting at 14 under, two strokes behind our leaders, Jashas Chandra MS and Veena Lavat. That must have excited the crowd there. I mean, uh, that is that is all their efforts worth with that shot right there. Tournament director Sampat Charis uh, pulled up. Wonder why. So coming back to that uh, drop, he. Um, you know, Manu Gandas got on the seventh. Remember, we were trying mm -hmm. to figure out why he was getting a drop, and it's uh, they, they have these temporary greens up, and his ball was lying on this temporary green, and you get relief from that. So, by the way, um, small golf trivia. When you are playing preferred lie on a golf course, the course record does not hold then. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, I think it's a fair, uh, yeah. fair argument as well. I think the course record is uh, held by Vivek Bhandari, if I'm not, too mis if I'm not mistaken. I remember him playing one tournament to really well and uh, he and Mukesh were tore away from the field. There seems to be a free drop from something. Is that a sprinkler head maybe? Or... First, first a free drop and then, then a preferred lie. Or first a preferred lie and then a free drop. Something's happening out here. So he's taken the preferred lie where the sprinkler is. From there, he's taken a free drop. Can you take another preferred lie? Um, I'm not sure, but I'm sure uh, Sampachari knows exactly what needs to be done. Yashas with his uh, birdie part coming across the whole width of the green. And uh, it's, it's actually quite a challenging putt from there. And he's done a he's really done a good, good job. job. And so he he's not going to let off. I think um, Yashas and we both realize that Manu's going to pick up another shot in this one. And uh, things are going to be very interesting once they play the 14th. I think Manu will bury this and 14 and uh, but the other two will as well. So 17, then yeah, I think seven, hmm, yeah, 17, 18 clear, 17 playoff. I'm still, I'm still holding my, my score. I think if all three of them are. Uh make birdie on number 14, then I think uh, I'm, I'm going to stick to my predictions as well. I, I feel they're not going to drop a shot. The only practical hole that they might drop a shot would be um, on the 16th. Yeah, that's the only chance that they... I can't imagine all three yeah. of them... Uh, they're, they're, they're swinging well, they're all in control. I don't. I don't see all three bogeying sixteen either. Maybe one of them. Maybe. It depends on on where the tee box is today. Though the pin is on the top right, I hope they haven't put the tee up and top. It's, it's almost like a par for them. You can't see the. Basically, you can't see the flag from where you're, you're teeing up. It's almost impossible to stop it from that distance and that flag as well. So. Not not the best. T box and the flag, if uh, it is there, let's hope uh, a little more room. So he's used the rules of golf very efficiently to his benefit. He's taken 
his uh, various reliefs and uh, come up short. I come up a very, it's a very average putt uh, by Veer. He knows it. Uh, should have made a better fist of that. Now, Manu, this uh, this becomes a very important part. Do you think there is uh, at all a doubt where this is going? The green is the other way around, so I hope he, he's seen that. It's, it's not going to move left to right as he thinks. It's, it's going to stay very straight, this part. Yeah, but I don't think he's going to miss this. He doesn't. It's, uh, I was actually uh, not wanting to say anything less to put a commentator's curse. And Manu uh, calling me up later and saying, don't say anything before my part next time. But uh, nothing of the sort there for him. Uh, a wonderful birdie indeed. A very impressive one. A very impressive approach shot on number 13. Be it from a similar length from the other side of the hole now. From yeah, this is also going to stay very straight. He's going to... Maybe move a bit right to left initially, then straighten up. So, right center. No yeah. problems for Veer uh, there. But uh, now Veer and Yashas have both seen Manu uh, getting back two strokes in them. Yeah. On 12 and 13, very impressive. But he's not on uh, uh, number 10, he missed a small one. Uh, for Birdie where we uh, was yes. just a little outside of Manu. So Manu's uh, heating it up in the back nine. Yeah, he, he he would have been, if he had made that, they would be all tied. Star watch indeed. This is one of the more uh, interesting strokes of the week for me in that uh, anybody who's played this golf course is well like it. Getting back to live action now on hole number 14. Uh, if that is someone's second shot, that is a very, very impressive second shot, number 14 on that flag. And I think it is Karan who's going to go mark it up. Ajitesh also has hit the putting system. And if he's, we can't see his ball, that means it's closer. Which that is, is um, further more impressive. Yeah. So, like I said, um, I, I think they're going to be two fours and a three on this hole. And uh, if uh, most like Manu is is on a rampage and he's he's he feels like he has to you know take the bull by its horns right now and uh, i don't i won't part put it past him making three on number 14. Well, i'm gonna short sighted himself but i don't think this is a very difficult shot very easy a very very simple chip he, he he can't land it on the putting surface though he needs to bump it into that slope and then let it run up the slope I think as long as he can just bump it up to anywhere on the green. Um, it's very simple. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly yeah. easy up and down as well. So, yeah. not too complicated. As long as he doesn't like dram it past uh, 20 feet, which uh, I don't see happening in his case. He's been really chipping and putting well. He's also been hitting the ball well. Just a few errors here and there. Otherwise, he was right there at the top. You know what I really I felt derailed him a bit was that three putt bogey on, on five. five. Yeah, it was like I I can't see him doing that. He missed a fairly makeable putt on number four after making three on the trot on uh, the first three, and then on the fifth after that tee shot, he's like he's gonna make one more. Yeah, but uh, not sure what that. And what then happened led there. to another bogey on number six. So compounding errors, still playing really well. Uh, nothing taken away from him. This golf course can come up with you losing a few strokes. Yeah, Karan with a very makeable 
eagle putt coming up on number 14 on your screen. Yashas has bogeyed number 13. Uh, uh, I Nation, he's dropped back to 15 under and tied with uh, with uh, Manu now. So we have a so Veer is in sole position of the lead. Yes, uh, indeed, that update now. Manu's going to feel like he has a shot. He, uh, all he has to do is uh, catch up to his friend and competitor. Karan, now we've seen nobody make this putt yet, except yep. for him. A wonderful, wonderful putt by Karan, getting the rewards for being aggressive on number 14. Yeah, he takes him to uh, double digits under par. He's 10 under now. Quick stride off the green as well. He's happy to have made it as uh, he should be. That's a, that, I think that's a that's a difficult read. I think the speed's not too troubling there, but but that uh, read is you know not what? that. Ajitesh makes this part. He's in it. I'll take number 13. Leader is 16. Four I think mathematically so it is, but I just feel the guys who are leading, they're not they're not really going to give if, up. A lot if of V strokes. doesn't, let's say V doesn't par this hole, uh, birdie this hole, and he stays at sixteen, and the other two birdie it, and they uh, go to you know come up to sixteen. Thirteen is very much in it. You can yeah, see this eleven under. He's, yeah, this. he knows how important this is. He's seen one go in already, so he knows that you know you know you can almost feed off the people you are playing with. Perfectly done in yeah. the middle of the hole this time, choosing to actually find the center, not uh, doing a 360 and uh, getting it in. That is wonderfully played golf hole by um, all three, in fact. Yeah, uh, Angad, the only one to make birdie here. Only one, just a birdie, Angad, come on. Yeah, straightforward, left center. It will move left to right now. I think he's aligned uh, left in. Just let it uh, turn back to the hole. No problems there for Angad. A good up and down, simple enough. That is well played. Hmm. Must be feeling like a bogey after seeing those two. So Veer is our sole leader now at 16 under. Jashas, having dropped his first stroke for today, is now tied with Manu at 15, a short of drift. One of the youngsters who uh, practice and play at the NGC. Uh, she is actually, uh, uh, she has become a professional golfer who you just saw on your screen. And sorry, I'm forgetting her name right now. Manu, position A1, left center. We're also in the fairway. We don't have a view of Yashas right now. Well, uh, 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 my apologies, uh, Angad's. Uh going to feel like a bogey on number 14 because he did make a bogey on number 14. So, uh, two pair of threes in the group and uh, uh, an unfortunate bogey for Angad, uh, which would mean that after that uh, blistering start, he finds himself over par on the day. And Ajitesh now sharing the hot round of the day with uh, Vida Lava at five under. This is uh, the par three. The, it is the tee box is at the back on top of the next to the monument. 
so it is going to play its full length at 245 yards today do you think it almost makes sense to actually leave it short uh, on the fairway and pitch it up and go for a par yeah it's, it's yeah a par would be like a it's it's playing 3.5 at least let's see how many uh let's go back and see it almost scores. makes sense to actually take a six yeah, or a five yeah, iron and uh, we've had hit the fairway and play it like a very short par four and uh, make a birdie there and you know essentially a par because it's a par three and it's a wonderfully hold part by Jai Raj. Not I'm a sorry single I'm... birdie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. About ten bogeys and two doubles so far. And rest uh, pause because uh, the, the, this is this is where Shorya is, and I think this is probably if it, if this is his tee shot. No, this is he just chipped up here. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is what he has left is for his spa. So uh, if I was confusing the viewers there, what I mean is that uh, the holes straightforward. There's no turn there, but because the tree line um, and and the tee box being elevated there because the design the right side of the green uh, practically is not that visible and with a long club coming in if you pitch it on the green it's almost impossible to actually stop it anywhere close to the flag and i think if you play a high ball flight you can maybe stop it at the back edge so it almost makes sense to actually take a club short leave it short of the green and have an uphill chip make your par and move on you know, uh, I actually completely agree with you. It's the easiest place to make a par on this hole if you not have, you are not on the green. Is from the front, no matter where the pin is, immaterial where the pin is. So even that right side bunker shot of the green seems like a better play to actually try pitching it on the green. Yeah, but you know that that uh, fair that grass bunker which is right next to the 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 sand bunker has a lot of uh, growth in it you ball really sits down deep in it so maybe that's a deterrent this looks like he needs a little more borrow on it yeah probably with the angle but a good part coming back another minor victim on the hold on. Probably the most ideal way to play this whole play it uh, straight or a little left. Give yourself that room. Don't even attempt to go at that flag. And you get a you get preferred lie. So you uh, you can tee it up and chip it close. Rashid on the tee now. All right, Rashid might just not think of anything and just go for the flag and say, you know what, I'm gonna like pitch it close to the flag, hit the flag stick, and stop it there. That's my way of doing it. He is teed up on the left side of the tee, which would mean he's trying to create an angle towards the flag. Yeah, but you no, know, he did do it. He did do it. He's if he makes it, it will be the the only birdie on number sixteen today. Isn't that brilliant? I mean, how good and confident uh, does one have to be to actually even attempt that shot? Well, you had asked me uh, uh, earlier today, why does he make so many birdies? So that is why he takes his chances. He just goes for it. Arjun, the third member of this group, not having the best of days today. He's uh, three over today. And two under for the uh, tournament. Spectators on the tee box is 16. It's a fun tee shot to watch. That is uh, the golf captain Simarjit Singh in the light green tee shirt. Very decorated yeah. amateur himself. Arjun also taking it up uh, high but leaking to the right it seems like. 
and it does. He comes up short, and it's oh, lying. that's a precarious little chip yeah, it's, shot. It's lying all right. You can see the whole ball, so it's not setting in too much. Yeah, Shah's. Uh, this is a tricky pitch. I'd rather have it from eighty yards than this, because this one, you are now you're contemplating: shall I pitch it up all the way and stop it, and shall I bump it into the into the spine and you know let it trickle down? I think in Two both sh- scenarios, it's very difficult to get a spin on a green like this. He's taken the more lofted club, so he's going to pitch it up. He has to clear the spine, and not by much. Maybe a yard or two past the spine, so he's going to be really, really accurate with his where he pitches this ball. A yard or two, a yard or two less, he stays there. A yard or two more, he goes over the back. And he's going. So that's really well done from there, by the way. I think that's brilliantly yeah. done. I mean, uh, eight feet uh, for birdie, given where he was, given the flag position. I think that's brilliantly done. And uh, seeing where Veer and Manu are, I think he needs to hold that part as well. Do you think one of them is going to make a three here? Manu. I, I, don't, I wouldn't put it past him at all. He's got like, Manu's got uh, something like a 18 footer coming in, down grain, downhill, but the green is not very... The, the speed is not that fast. So you'd rather have, and like I said yesterday, you'd rather have a downhill putt out here so you know that you're not going to leave it short, right? And we've already seen uh, Karan make a putt from that. And he's not got too many light green patches on his path. It's going to be Veer putting first and won't he want to make it uh, before Manu? Just give him that little extra thought to think about. So GP has buried the last hole to finish under par today, so you'll, you'll be happy about that. GPS is our defending champion. Yeah, he's he's buried the last hole to finish uh, four under for the tournament. Abhinav on the right, uh, taking preferred lie. I think he's going to put it. He's taking that long. Uh, preferred lie is when you want to get close so you can use your putter. Well, that happens uh, on our left now for a three is Veer Alavat, current leader of the tournament. And this would put a stamp of authority on the tournament if he makes it. Yeah, this if he makes this one, then he's almost got both hands on the trophy. Which is... Narrowly missing out on the right, but a great putt and a well-played hole. For Veer, which that was a really good putt. Uh, he had the speed down okay. precisely, and uh, uh, Manu has got a good read on the speed now. Manu can very easily join him. So, 17 now. Leaders at 17, 9 ish. You want to check, 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 check that number 19. Or you want to stick to it? I, I went with 18. 19 for a win and 18 for a playoff. Okay. And I said 17 for a playoff and 18 for, for a, win, a win, right? Yeah. Arjun, uh, not too bad, but uh, he would have to hit a good one to uh, make a par easier on this hole for him. Not the best of positions, but not the worst either. Yeah, ball lying all right. You can see the ball. That means uh, you can put some spin on it. And just, he's done a really good job of it also. Yeah, just but leaves him in that uh, corridor of uncertainty coming back down. Uh, Manu now just a uh, little uh, disturbed by something, but uh, regroup, regather. Going through his routine again. This would be a very, very important part. How important in the context of this tournament? Yeah. One more look. Has he hit it enough? Has he hit it enough? It hasn't disappeared. He hasn't. He's left it. 
He's left it. Uh, he's left it uh, about three feet short. That's surprising, you know. He, he had given him a really good read on how the ball is going to roll out at the end. I just yeah. feel. Uh, I just felt like he took a little longer than normal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I felt the, uh, the, you know, the um, on 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 this one and uh, um, a hole before this where we saw him just taking that little extra time, just trying to make sure that he has the line, he has the line, and then you sometimes just don't stroke it enough. So twice it's happened, but uh, if he manages to make that three footer, get a four, and it's there's no there's no damage there and. This would be a brilliant, brilliant birdie for Yashas. Yeah, if he can, you know, make this, he can, he knows that he can, he, he'll back himself. Meanwhile, Labina on the right with his uh, birdie attempt at number 16 coming up a little short. And and that's beautifully done by Yashas. That is impressive. Uh, he might have walked onto that chip shot and actually he might have had no thoughts at all. But when he walked onto the chip shot, I thought, this could be where Manu and Vihir uh, push themselves a little forward of Yashas and make it difficult for him to catch them. But he's walking off this hole, not losing a shot to both Manu or Vihir. So, job well done for him. Yeah. So, Vihir's uh, at 17, Yashas at 16, and this Manu's got a putt to join Yashas at 16. Manu comfortably tapping that in for his four on number 14. Uh, things getting very, very exciting. Did he make out no, Han has left it himself woefully short on this hole. I always, also thought that Putter would, was not the best choice from there. There's so much of... Uh, grass uh, the apron to contend with first and it's uphill and it's into the grain and it's you're going to really whack your putter. if it's a big uh, turning putt i feel it's always uh, smarter to get a wedge in and uh... yeah he's got a little bit of work and he's this probably the closest he's come to make a bogey today He's always had a birdie putt. Maybe sometimes the birdies don't go in, but the pars do. And in Abhinav's case, it does a little fist pump for him there. He's happy. Finally, the putter is rolling a little better. Yeah, he's, he's all right. He's in seventh position right now. And he's, got, and he's birdied 15 as well. So he's two under today. Seven under for the tournament. I'll keep it my at seven a um, couple more birdies. He's sees in the he's find himself inside the top five, maybe, you know. So he's playing for a lot of money right now. Abhina uh, does not live too far away from the golf club, lives in uh, Faridabad. So he knows uh, the conditions fairly well. We have Arjun Prasad now for his uh, part of, we saw that chip shot from the short and right of the green. It's a tricky part, uh, downhill on this hole, it turns a lot as well. Not necessarily turning a lot, but turning enough to give you a little thought. No, this, this actually, um, it's left to right, right to left, I think it's almost right in, max. And he does. He just pulled that putter back a little because he thought it might not come back, but it does. It's a, it's a good part by uh, Arjun on number 16. So in the top 10, there are only two blemish-free rounds. One is by uh, Lohan and one is by Veer. Rashid with a... The, the solitary birdie on number 16 today. Probably a very routine birdie for him. <laughs> He just 245 yards. It's it's, a, it's an absolute uh, crazy. And you know, um, the, see now that goes to show from uh, 200, uh, 230, 40, 50 yards out, he he does uh, pour it in two, which means a lot of the times the par fives, he's, he's he has that distance coming in or a lot of par fours which play 245, 250 yards. 
and that's why he just makes his eagles yeah so that dis- because he takes dis- on those flags he's not playing to the 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 center of the green he's taking on the flag from 245 yards out exactly so when he's on a par 5 240 250 230 yards out he's not thinking birdie he's thinking eagles so when he stands on a par 3 like this because he knows if even if he misses it he can his his chipping is good his putting is phenomenal so he knows even if he misses it it's it, birdie is still happening exactly and i think that goes to show why he played the 16 so well and so comfortably and uh, anger now on number 16 with his tee ball He's gone after this one. Many more people hitting the 16th green today than compared to yesterday. We saw a lot of balls out on the right. Maybe maybe a little more windier yesterday. So, a few more mistakes. Windier, and I think the flag was uh, in a further difficult position. It was it was stuck to the right, but it was further back. So they had even more distance to cover and uh, maybe the players mm, choosing to play a little more conservative today as well. I just bogeyed 15 which is probably taking his chances of winning our this tournament away. He's dropped back to 12 under. The cameraman getting a little confused uh, with the practice swing of Ajitesh. Uh, He's teeing off now. Almost the same speed as his real swing. <laughs> They're far in the background. That's his strike now. Taking one hand off the club. That was a good sign. Looks like he's pulled it a bit. It is so easy on a par 3 that is uh, over 230 yards. It's so, so easy to... It's Actually, not a very big specific. target either. The green is not the biggest uh, green to hit to. And we have uh, the updated leaderboard. We have Veera Lawat leading the pack at 17 under, followed by Yashas, who's come off a birdie, but a bogey on the previous. And uh, Manu Kandas catching up again at 16 under par. Well, um, it's it's a three-horse race now. Uh, with that bogey that uh, Ajitesh made on 15, is, is takes his chances of winning this event. Dhrushan having a good day today. He's three under today, uh, six under for the tournament. Dhrushan playing well. I mean... Uh... Uh, whenever I see him uh, next, I'm going to tell him that right before the Noida tournament, he met me, which is why he's there in the top 10. He played well at Chandigarh as well, actually. Yeah, I'm sure it had something to do with me, but uh, I'm just kidding. He's been playing really well. So the, the funny uh, story is that he, uh, his father and my father my father are from the same regiment, 17 Parachute Regiment. And his father is uh, P.T. Blue from the Indian, and so is my dad. That's a nice connection there. Yeah. Dhruv's one of those guys, actually, uh, he's he's not just a good golfer. He's 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 an out-and-out athlete. He's uh, quick off the blocks if you're running with him. He's uh, a very good cricketer. Um, he plays really good table tennis. And uh, he's one of those examples of uh, the modern athlete who's good at a lot of things and just chooses to be a professional golfer. Yeah, athletes who play golf uh, generally never uh, have to strive for distance. They, you know, you have that extra uh, gear in your cars, which you, you you can use when you want. And he's got one of the most uh, beautiful rhythmic golf swings. Like his his tempo is so consistent. The way he approaches his long game, never in a rush. So he's, 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 he's quite the aesthetic uh, uh, golfer, quite the aesthetic demeanor on the course to watch for. Good to see him playing consistently. Karan uh, striding 
up towards the green on number 16, probably the only one in this group to have found the putting surface. It looks like a knife in his hands, that uh, thin blade, probably a two iron. Ajitesh seems to have found the, the green side bunker on the left. So it's, um, Anga is, uh, has found that grass bunker short and short of the green. Can we appreciate uh, the scoring this week? I mean, I would have never guessed that the score would have gone that low. And uh, even today, we know that Manu has been uh, doing a little catch-up, but he's three under par for the day. And he started uh, with the lead, uh, with the lead today, and he finds himself a stroke adrift from. Yeah, you know, Veer is six hundred today. Six hundred pound the day, and uh, and some of those flag positions are not easy. You know, uh, a funny aspect about uh, Noida Golf Course viewers might not know. You'll see that if you look at the bunkers, greenside bunkers or fair bunkers, you'll see that. There's a point where there's it almost feels like the there's no face on the bunker you can see on the top on the left side of your screen, and that hap happens to be only on this golf course because a lot of our members of Noida Golf Course are retired army officers and they're quite old. They have find it difficult to step down into the bunker, so there's uh, they, they they've made the slopes gradual so they can actually you know wade into it and wade out of it without you know, hurting themselves you can see that on the on the green side bunker on your screen in line with that curve that you can actually it's almost there's no face to it even the sand uh, in noida that they use is a little different than let's say other golf courses uh, especially let's say next week when they're playing ipc uh, oh, it's a different that, sand that sand is so good the IDC sand is phenomenal. I, I, like it's uh, the consistency of the grain of the sand and, uh, and the amount the adjustment that players have to make. Yeah, the amount of sand is so consistent. In every bunker, is the same amount of sand and the same texture to it also. So see how things switch. Um, Anga. Uh, bogeying them the par uh, five and the other two eagling it and then Angad birding number 15 and the other two bogeying it you know so blows back and forth yeah so Angad is uh, back to even par today 10 under for the tournament Karan Pratap with a birdie putt on, on number 16, 25 feet left to right uphill. It's tough to judge the speed on this one. Coming up a bit short, but uh, all in all, if you walk off with a three on sixteen, you you've done pretty well. You've had only one birdie on sixteen, number sixteen today, which was uh, we just saw it being made by Rashid. Quite um, unsurprisingly, and uh, I feel if this. Uh... Trio ends up making a par on this hole. Would be one of the better groups going through this hole. I think the best group to go past this hole is the one that just went. Uh, Rashid made par. Uh, Arjun made par, and Lohan made par. No, Rashid made birdie. Birdie, sorry. sorry, yes, sorry, sorry. I mean yeah. score wise, yes, but uh, I think the way these three played the hole was. Uh, Cleaner, in my opinion. Ravana had that long putt for par, and uh, Arjun was in a bit of a bother, but uh, made a decent up and down for par. This one moves a lot from this right to left. 
an out and out feel but you know, yeah sneaks it in from the right so a good pass for Rajitesh from that left side bunker Angad this one has a little left to right in it very very it just moves a smidge I'm going to do a, a, a fairly decent chip from there, it's a better than average, but uh, he does have uh, this slightly tricky putt, slight downhiller, slight peeling off. The breaks to the left uh, or the right? A smidge from left to right. Okay, so there's yeah. a little peeler from the left. Yeah, if his caddy gets out of the way, we will see that also. We just uh, see how quickly he strides to pick the ball up or... And he does comfortably hold it out. Uh, Karan's got a mere tap in for his bar. Not not a mere tap in, a smidge more than that, but shouldn't be a drop. Yeah, it's just right center. Him. Yeah, actually right in. You got to be sure of your lines before you hit your putt out here. You can't second guess yourself. Absolutely, especially in the short ones. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, it just leaves the hole in a. Hurry. Whatever whatever break we don't have from slope, we have from grain at Noida, of course. You can see he's found, he's used the left side of the hole. That turned yeah. fairly quickly. Yeah, he. I think he just wanted to just hit it straight firm or right center firm and it was right in for sure. As we have here, getting to the end of the tournament, uh, this was, and this still is, the Nissan powered Delhi NCR open uh, in the Noida Golf Course. Here we find ourselves on hole number 17 after a beautiful birdie by Rashid on the difficult par 316. He finds himself a little short and left. You know, not the. It's it's actually a pretty uh, good place to be today with that pin on the middle right, and uh, he has enough green to play with. He doesn't have to fly the ball a long way. He can, you know, pitch it somewhere between uh, the front, the green, and the front of the green and the flag, and let it release up to the hole like it he has done. So, pretty straightforward bunker shot today. I almost feel now uh, Rashid is going to be. Always disappointed making birdies on par fives. He needs a eagle to satisfy his skill. Anga now on the tee on 17. That was a big heave and uh, I think just got uh, stuck a little. The club face came back late, which is why I missed it to the right. So quite unhappy with that tee shot. Arjun also now on uh, number 17, close to the close to where Rashid was in the bunker. Taking his stance. Surya animated with his uh, discussion. Oh, that's a wonderful bunker shot by Arjun. Beautifully done. Mm -hmm. Well played. It's a really good technique. Ajitesh with his tee shot on number 17, the dog leg right to left, par 5. Looks like he's leaked it right as well. Lohan with the pitch coming up on number 17. Lohan, uh, fondly known as Elbro. Lohan's the official uh, nickname giver um, on tour. Is he? Yeah, he's, he's nicknamed so many of the golfers. Uh, has he given you one? I'm not sure. Uh, and if he has, it hasn't reached me yet. But I'd have to meet him. And I think uh, uh, if I do at some point get to uh, be on tour and play a little golf with him, maybe he's going to come up with something. 
Yeah, he's 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 uh, with ONGC, which, which is my I used to be with them as well. Uh, same, I, I used to be with ONGC as well. Played under Ranaji for the longest time, and Veer uh, taking it on the right side feels like oh, what a tee shot by Veer Lawat there. Yeah, that's a really good tee shot. You know, and under the gun, he's uh, he's leading, and he has two really good players chasing him down. We making it look like a 140 yard par three, not a 240 yard par three. And given, uh, look at the leaves there. Yeah, the, 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 the wind, wind has picked up. up. Yeah, yeah. I I was uh, with ONGC for almost a decade, from 1994 to 2004, before uh, you guys joined. And uh, I had a good time with ONGC. They 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 were very really nice to me. I won the PSPB twice, actually. So that's why they were very nice to me. <laughs> it's always important to do play well that tournament well, right? Yeah, the one tournament uh, that they get you on board for. Yes, yeah, now after that T shot, I think it's going to. They make... all made par on fifteen, so the score remains as it was: uh, seventeen, sixteen, sixteen. I feel he's taking it uh, towards the flag as well. Yeah, he looks like it's on. He's found the bunker, I guess. Yeah, but it's not the like it's not the toughest place to be. It's, um, as long as he draws a decent line, it's not the end of the world. He might even actually feel like he can hold it from the bunker. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward um, bunker shot. Nohan, this would uh, be a really nice way, way to finish up his round. He's buried 14, 15, part the tough 16, and he's got a very, very makeable birdie putt coming up on 17. Okay, I'm going to give this one to him. He's, he's had the putter going, uh, working hot for him after the cold, cold few uh, 12, 13 holes. He's finally found his rhythm and uh, player of his quality. Come on, Abhinav, get this one in. Yeah. And he does. Yeah, I remember me telling you that he just needs to keep knocking on the door and it's all going to open at some point and he, it has for him. The floodgates have opened up for him. He's had three birdies in the last four holes. Finally, uh, Abhinav for the day is not. Show me the sunset. You make me happy. We want to go there. It's beautiful. Mag Night. Be celebrated with the big, bold, beautiful Nissan Mag Night. Two hundred forty-five yards is probably the longest part three we'll play on tour, right? I believe so. I mean, uh, and it doesn't. It, it's not very straightforward as well. It sometimes you get a little visually blocked with the flag, and then it is elevated, which actually gives you uh, a I'm better just, look at all the obstacles. I mean, I'm just rechecking on that. Uh, only body bit. I might be wrong. I'm just going to make sure that I'm not. Yasha is finding the grass bunker on number 16. As long as he draws a good lie, it's, pretty, it's a pretty decent place to be. And We've just seen a few players coming in from that side and just sort of uh, missing it to the right and heading over the hole. So just taking a little more break than there is. So Rashid has gone birdie, 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 par, birdie, birdie. And he's three under as well. So good to see him back on track. He's three under, nine under for the tournament. Another one would take him to a tie for fifth alongside Angad. As things stands, we have on our leaderboard uh, after 15 holes. Biralavat uh, finds himself in the lead, 17 under, followed very, very closely and eagerly by Yashash Chandra and Manu Kandas, both in his group. I think it's now uh, left with these three boys 
and uh, they all would know what to do because they're playing with the leader. Well, uh, that makes life easier for you know for them as far as they know that this is uh, they know what lies ahead of them. He is playing with them, and the. Uh, Ajitesh, who's uh, in fourth position, is at uh, 12 under, which is, I think, a little too far back now. He's now left himself a... a little more work than I would like him to have left himself with. I mean, he could uh, leave this green with the exact same uh, situation. One shot trailing uh, Veer Lavat and uh, alongside Manu, but... He definitely has given himself more stress and than he would have liked. And I think that putt's going to become a little more nervy if Veer manages to make his for birdie. Yeah. You can see that he had a little bit of that gesture he made that he was not uh, very pleased with himself. Manu has a putt, so... It's... And uh, he's from the front of the green. So we've seen uh, this one being really slow. Abhinav came up a good seven, eight feet short with his part when he had it. Well, we have a four-letter spectator crossing the green. He's trying to get in on the action. He was uh, unhappy with all the attention going to the golf at that. Yeah. Quite a few in order, of course, uh, you know, surprisingly. It was fun around uh, dogs running around, playing golf. What more does one want? We have more than dogs there. Look at that squirrel, squirrel going about his great camera work there. Uh, having probably a little peanut. Take an afternoon nap after that. Manu, now we saw Abhinav uh, coming up short, and Manu is given a good, a good rap, and he's come so up short, short as well. Down. So he he also has work to do with that part. Veer, now he can make a big, big move here by making that part. Yeah, I don't put it past him. He's uh, he's six hundred today, and he's not even come close to dropping a shot. I mean, okay. if he makes that, he's going to have a two-stroke lead with two holes left and uh, one of them a par five, which can make things interesting. Which is the other actually making in his favor because he's yeah. the longest out of them. Yeah. So this will actually almost uh, put one hand on the trophy. Absolutely. Judging by the chip shots I've seen from that direction, I think uh, this breaks on the right, but it breaks less than... No, uh, the, the, if he was a little further down where his stance is, like, this one has about uh, 8 inches of break on it. At least 8 inches. And he's given it enough. Oh, oh that's a horseshoe for Veer uh, that, that That smile of agony there. I, I think uh, that that leaves a little more room for uh, Manu and uh, Yashas. They, they, they'd have a sigh of relief there. Yeah, you saw it's almost a foot of break. and He's he, not moved. He had a half fist It just up. didn't move at the end. You know, it's just dead. It kept straight right at the end. That's what made it lip out. It was very unfortunate. Oh, it that is so disappointing so for him. It was, it was uh, he, he retracted his fist pump there. He was so sure it's in the middle of the cup. And Yashas uh, is now, can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief, but he needs to make this. It's, uh, if it's, if he doesn't, two shots is a lot to cover up. And you know that that's 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 what golf is sometimes at the end of the day. He hit two really pure shots on number sixteen and uh, still manages to just make a par and they can hit very average two shots and, and one really uh, pure shot, just one and make par. Absolutely, and uh, yeah. Well, in Yashas's case, and for the sake of this tournament, we'll hope uh, that pure stroke comes in right about now. Yeah, and it looks like he's oh, pulled no. it. Yes, I think that stroke was a little jerky as well. No, he, there was more line to it. I think it was just that, was that part never looked like it's going to go in, and uh, 
it's a disappointing nod for him as well. I think he's realizing that his chances have suddenly reduced drastically. Yeah, that was uh, very important for him to all as to stay in touch with Veer. Right after he stroked it, his shoulders drooped a little, trying to force the ball to not break that much, but uh, disappointing. Well, had Veer made that part, it would have been curtains closed for uh, Yashas for sure. But Manu now still in the hunt. Slightly different angle, maybe not as much break for him. Yeah, very straight. He's, uh, I don't. I think he's going to make it very easily. And he does comfortably right in the middle of the hole. So that's the equation now. I think Yashas definitely needs to have a little red on the next and on the finishing hole. Meanwhile, Karan on number 17. He has plenty of room to work with. I think uh, Veer, uh, worst case scenario, finish Papa. Worst case. So that means Yashas has to come buddy buddy and hope for the best. And Manu Gandas uh, also, you know, worst case spa. So I, I, I don't see Yashas in the race anymore. As you know, because I would, I would, I would imagine so. I have a feeling that uh, Veer's not going to let up on a birdie or number eighteen. And and, it's, and he's the he's the longest driver out of the trio. And he's been driving it well today. And he's driving it well. And he's, he's not par five. He's going to he's going to definitely be on or around the green in two. And he's not I, he's not scoring because of his putting or uh, some brilliant shot game. He's he's actually playing very routine, um, solid golf. He's playing really good golf. He had to one uh, uh, two putt birdie on number one. Then he had that really easy chip in birdie on number. Uh, two. Then he had that two putt birdie on number. He had an eagle on number two because of that drive. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, eagle on number two, and then he had that really good. He was in the greenside bunker on number eight, the par five. He He's basically put himself in position throughout, and I think with the wind picking up, it's going, it's going to make difficult for Manu to actually. And tenth hole, he had a really, really good tee shot, which left him like four feet for birdie. The other birdie he's made is on the, on the fourteenth, which is a two putt. If you were Manu right now, do you think you? Try to force the issue and make an eagle here, or you say that okay, I'm gonna make a birdie, he can't. and then maybe do the same on 18. You know, he needs to hit this drive in the fairway first, which he has. Which he has a quick uh, pick of the tee is always a good sign for a professional golfer. Yeah, just gave it a little extra look at the end there, but uh, should be fine. First things first, he's made. He's put the ball in, in the fairway. He's gonna. He's gonna give him a chance to go for the green and two. Um, the pin front right is actually in the collection area, so you can get really close to this pin today because it is where the ball actually feeds into. And we uh, scary just indicating uh, where the wind is from from the right side, which I would imagine, given the shape of the hole, uh, probably makes this drive a little easier. Anga there, that just bumped a lot. Uh, still carried enough speed. Not a bad part after all, uh, from the front of the green on the 17th. So well, I'm now. coming back. 17th playoff, 18 win or not? I think it's uh, uh, 18 playoff and uh, 19 win. Mm, looking a little anxiously, but he has enough uh, uh, firepower to... It looks like he's pulled it a bit. By the way Veer is playing, I'd be surprised if... Uh, uh, he's missed it by a big margin. I think probably just anxious that he didn't hit the right side of the fairway <laughs> that he was trying to hit. He's just playing so well. Yashas, I would imagine, has to go uh, uh, finish with a three and three. Some of the members playing number thirteen, standing behind, having a look at the, our leaders play number seventeen. Maybe they can learn a trick or two. You never know, they might just tee it up on number 17 right after this and say, I can repeat that. Yes, just now. Now I'm leaked it out to the right, uh, the hands out, just getting out of the shot. I think he's just got a little derailed with uh, that bogey on number 16. 
mentally uh, he's he seems to have just gotten out of that shot fairly quickly yeah he just looked a little quicker you i think he wanted to put a little more into it and was, uh, didn't sequence it correctly so sometimes you know you feel like you need to do something extra is actually not true you need to do what you need you know you can do again and again absolutely and uh, i think that's what happens sometimes a lot of players don't realize that just the illusion or feeling that they've swung it hard actually has got nothing to do with the uh, ball speed or swing speed it's it's barely anything if at all you're so much uh, better off swinging within yourself and making sure you get good contact yeah timing is the key to to uh, to distance and um, you know I was listening to Bryson's uh, interview yesterday and he says you know I I can get it up to 200 and plus on my swing speed and I I feel like I can hit more fairways and be more consistent at 190 and uh, that's uh, that's a nice buffer to have <laughs> 190 is a wonderful buffer to have and uh, you know Scotty Scheffler on the other side, and you know he's saying that you know you're so accurate. He says you know after I finish my technical work, I work with a lot and hitting different yardages, which is um, something that you get on the golf course. Different yardages, you don't get one set yardage as such, which you generally practice on the driving range. Arjun Prasad on number eighteen, uh, it's also a fairly brutal flag. I mean just over the bunker hugging the edge on the left side 17 18 or 18 19 you want to change <laughs> brutal flag <laughs> i uh, i think uh, i'm leaning more towards your prediction but since you have made that prediction i'll just uh, maybe give uh, uh, V the benefit of the doubt and say he's going to go all aggressive on 18 knowing that he's winning maybe not sure yet we know uh, Manu and Vyasha is both capable of making eagles. Speaking of making eagles, we have Rashid Khan on our screens. No surprise there. Um, always lurking in and around leaderboards. Lohan has had such a good run um, ever since he made his first birdie of the day on number 14. He's in birdie 15, then he's birdie 17. It's 300 today. Rashid from under the hole on number 18. I think with the flag position today, it's very difficult to maybe stop it with a 9 or an 8 iron. So I think players might be taking a driver off the tee. Rashid uh, holding that one out. That's a good finish for him on number 18. He's so gone birdie, birdie, birdie. I think lunch is going to taste the same for him. He's just so used to making birdies all the time. It doesn't really make a difference. That will make him come into a tie for fifth with uh, Angad. Yeah, I'm always fascinated how the players to watch out for, even if they don't uh, lurk around the leaderboards after the first two rounds, they somehow managed to find themselves, their names, around the top of the leaderboard uh, by day four. It's just certain quality and consistency that these players have. Yeah, self-belief. They know they, where they belong and they know that they're capable of uh, making the swings that they need to make under the pressure. And, and they, as a result, they, they're more consistently performing at, when the pressure is on. And also never getting phased by a situation. I mean, these guys uh, have their nerves in control so much that they're, uh, they're so within themselves and within the round. So we have uh, Elbro. Hopefully it's his last stroke for the day, and it is. So it's looked like the floodgates have opened up big time for Abhin Ablohan. He's been... He's, he's just one putted all the last five holes. Good to see the putter finally working. He deserves it. He's been striking the ball really well, as good as anybody today. And uh, he certainly deserved a few putts uh, falling in. And that's a great example of how they say that golf is the great equalizer. So if it makes you miss a few, it also gives you back a few. So good finish uh, 
for both Abhinav and uh, Rashid in the group. Arjun now just uh, waiting to go through his routine and finish with a par himself for number 18. A slightly forgetful day for Arjun, but a um, very hardworking guy, a very, very good ball striker. Very good all-round game. Um, has been playing well. It's a matter of shooting four rounds, four good rounds for him. Let's keep the tally of the group for uh, single putts on 18. And he does so comfortably. Well done. That's a closeout for the tournament for these guys. Great effort for four days. Well played event. That's uh, left the stage open for our penultimate group to play number 18. Featuring Ajitesh, Angad and Karan. KPS. Not too long ago, he was standing on this tee playing a playoff against GPS. Yes. Last as, year, same time. As we said, now with the driver here. He's let one, he's unleashed one on number 18. Yeah, like, recoil there was uh, probably faster than the golf swing. Yeah, he could have hit backwards also. Yeah. He's uh, found the fairway there. He leaves himself a good angle on number 18. That's a look from the tee box. The tree line hugging on the left side and uh, the tree uh, jumping out from the left has the there's a hazard just before that for anybody who's not it's a narrow shoot by the way it's uh they've taken the tee box further back we're playing the absolute tips on number 18. i thought you know it looked like they moved it up but they haven't they it's right on the tips and it's a narrow shoot you the starting line is really tight I've personally always liked number 18 because uh, I've got a formula where I play a little draw from the right and if it stays out to the right, um, I always, I, I tend to hit it so hard on number 18 that I make sure I can get it as far as possible. So anytime I have to chip out, let's say even if I have to chip out sideways. You can chip it on the green. Most of the times, if not, I still have a little wedge in the hand. So it, it gives you an opportunity. I yeah. can never get myself to hit an iron shot short of the hazard there so i'm okay actually missing it on the right and you you get uh, I, I think the trees uh, lining the right side of the 18th which would also be the right side of number 17 um they, they give you plenty of uh, gaps they're not as narrowly spaced as uh, probably on the other holes i think this is where uh, uh yashas is chipped out into from having missed the feather on the right with his tee shot, you can see there's a his caddy's got a steel club in his hand, so this is not his. Hey man, he must have hit it quite a while, right? Because he's basically come sideways. Yeah, just looked like he was really quick on that one. I wanted to hit it a bit further, and ended up hitting it shorter. How much do you think uh, that putt had to do with this uh, drive? Everything. Everything he just changed his mindset. He's just. I don't think he would have been uh, anywhere close to uh, the right or the left side uh, had he made that par on sixteen. But you know what? Uh, if you if you see him uh, hitting his last few holes, fourteen, he missed the fairway on the right. He chipped it in, to the front. Then on uh, fifteen, we didn't have a look at that. But sixteen again, it was right. So he's he's hit a few to the right. Uh, coming in, he hit, he missed it to the right on number 13 as well. Exactly what needs to be done on 15 on this tee box when he had this which is very possible. Easiest to put on. Has not made iron again. Lean to the left uh, would indicate he's uh, pushed it a little bit right. right. Yeah. So that's the miss going for him uh, suddenly. Uh, Manu is just short of the green. Veer has hit the green. Veer's got the putter out. So Manu needs. Uh, at least make up and down, at least. 
you never know. Veer goes uh, three and three, proves both of us wrong, and gets to twenty. Mm, he's got a holdable three though. If that's him problem. in two, that's a very very impressive uh, hole played by him. And Manu has not got the easiest of chip shots. He's short sighted himself a little bit. Yeah, but you know he's 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 a good chipper. He's just chipping and pitching is is nothing um, fancy. He's very uh, I would say uh, one dimensional when it comes to you know chipping, but consistent. He's he repeats it, so he knows how this ball he knows how this ball is going to react once he chips it. You think he's maybe thinking he would have to hold this? No, no, no. He's he's gonna hit a good chip, and if it goes in, it goes in. It doesn't. He wants he wants to make a good up and down. If if he holds it, take his so, chances yeah. on the eighteenth. It's not the easiest of holes. It's uh, it's got a little bit of a. Uh, it asks you a couple of questions, and uh, I think he's just uh, he's gonna make sure that he gets his uh, hits a good chip, gets his. Four and let's wait to see what he does. Well, surprisingly, uh, Angad is short of the hazard there, so he's choosing to uh, lay it up. Um, do you, do you find that surprising, or uh, do you think that still can be the play uh, with the short left flag? It's it's he still got from there. It's uh, maximum and eight iron max, you know nine or eight, either of the two. So, not a you know if you hitting a driver will guarantee. You see that? He's oh, that's that. a brilliant He's, yeah. chip shot by Manu. And uh, no knows at all there. Yeah. So, you know, we has to if he wants daylight and he wants uh, to breathe easy, he needs to hold that part. Now, Veer's going to feel like if he can manage to hold this part, that's a tournament for him. Meanwhile, Karan on the screens on number 18 after a brilliant drive. Manu choosing to tap it in and move on to the 18. Give himself those uh, few extra seconds to decide what exactly he wants to do on the tee. Karan now a wonderful uh, ball striker and wedge player. Not got a lot of distance left here in a perfect angle walking into the 18th. You know what? If Yashas can somehow find it in him and hit this really perfect bunker shot and hold it out, which he hasn't, so that's... Besides I think it's just uh, I, I think just mental errors that uh, they just going through after those uh, after that miss on number sixteen, and uh, we also watched Kanan uh, with a very poor wet shot on number eighteen. He didn't want to forget that um, from an otherwise uh, very well played day. Veer now, Veer has to feel like this part is the tournament for him. He makes this part. He's going to be too clear playing eighteen. And he's not going to at all give a stroke on that. So Manu would have to make a two on number eighteen for him to have any. If chance. he makes this, he, he's uh, he's reached your number. Yeah, this is this is yeah. curtains then yeah. for uh, Manu. And I think Veer knows exactly what the situation is. If he makes a four here and uh, Manu makes a four, which he's already done, Manu will have one shot to catch, which nobody will bet against. Yeah, it looks like uh, we a little left from the hole, a little uphill putt. Putt's breaking hard to the right, and uh, I think he's uh, underboarded there. But broke a little more. So then that does leave uh, Manu with another opportunity to catch him on the 18th. 
Meanwhile, Yasha is hoping not to drop another shot. Yeah, this, this is, uh, you know, I think this is just, uh, uh, it's not going to be enough at the end of the day. If Yasha makes still, it. He still has to make sure, depending on what Ajitesh does on number 18, uh, Yasha still needs to make sure that he finishes third. Uh, it's a long season ahead and uh, a lot of order of merit rankings and uh, a lot of money list that matters at the end of the year. So... Um, there's still a lot to play for. Good to see him going through his routine. Not to be on number 17. Uh, leaving it a little short. Under, under boring it also. A little unhinged uh, is Yashas currently. But uh, he's, he's a fairly seasoned golfer. I think... Uh, Going to the 18 t he's going to regroup and say, I've got one more hole to play and just... Play yeah, Reed has left action. himself more work than he would have desired, though I, he's been putting well, so... But these putts and these situations do get tricky. They do get... Uh, even if it's a two-footer, like he's, he's bringing him back, he's just making sure uh, everything's in order. He, he knows the importance of this. Yeah. This is to go into into the last hole with a one shot lead, and not to forget momentum. I mean, uh, one who's made a birdie, picking up a shot, he doesn't want to make a par and give the momentum to him. And uh, that's that just makes everything. Yeshas is going to feel really bad now. Yes, but I think it's going to be so one of the more learning experiences for him because seventeen eighteen. You're right on point now. Mm. Right on the money there. Veer's just... Uh, he's not opened the door for Manu. He's basically told him to go uh, Come inside. In. He's like, uh, we, we, in. we both will open the door and we see who goes in first. Do That's we have a playoff? That's the view of the 18th green. Angad with a putt from over the hole on the left. Uh, coming up a little short. Do we have a playoff on our hands? There is the situation now. Two golfers, both from DLF, both good friends, both international golfers and both winners on tour. They're going to be teeing off on 18th. Manu is going to be first, picking up another shot. He started the day leading the tournament, finds himself leading the tournament alongside Vahid we, Alawath with the driver on 18. I think momentum is in favor of Manu now. So swipe leaning to the left a little, pushing it to the right. Hand gesture would suggest it's a little further right than he would have liked. Do you think uh, watching Manu Maybe not hitting it in the most ideal spot makes this tee shot for Veer a little easier. I think uh, Veer is going to just stick to his uh, game plan. He's driven it beautifully. It's not like he's uh, he just three putted from twelve feet. I think that, that you could attribute it to like a slight brain fog. There is absolutely no reason he would have done that. I think he just gotten in in his head, or maybe he got ahead of himself. Yeah, and just reacted to the situation differently. And that happens. That happens to the best of golfers in the world. So, uh, Reed now with his driver. Looks like he's pulled it in the water hazard. Uh, he's pulled it in that direction. Given his length, he can fly it. But uh, looking at it anxiously, I'm not sure where that ended up. We can't know currently when we see where they've ended up uh, who's in a better position. <laughs> this uh, is not looking... Uh, looks like it's going to be very exciting at the end. All the wheels are coming off. It is between the two of them. 
but uh, they're a little more nervy than we anticipated. I think given the line uh, where we hit it, I feel on the right side, Manu's probably, uh, I had to guess, I think Manu's probably in a better position. Now you can get to the front of the green easily. Uh, Veer is cut off completely. Even if he's flown the water hazard, there are these uh, trees out there which are really, really dense. And at his length, uh, he can't have a line to the green because then there's out of bounds that practice chipping green. Uh, Yasha's pushing that out to the right a uh, little, but in I told you, there's got a lot of rights going over the last few holes. <laughs> Drink it up. Well, hold uh, by Angad, left himself a tester there on number 18. Finishes up with a 72, even par for the for the day. 10 under for the tournament. You can see how the how the different grains on the green. Beautiful view. Uh, that's the, the the cart path comes from the ninth green to the tenth T. We have a tie on top at 17 under between Veer Alawat and Manu Gandash Yashas. You know, it's losing a little bit of momentum towards the end with that bogey uh, on 16 and 17. Rashid Khan finishing strong towards the end with a three under. Not sure where Veer's ball has ended up. Would be really interesting to know where his tee shot has ended up on number 18. He's pulled it off the tee to left towards the water hazard. Yashas uh, missed a few to the right coming in today. Um, a little un unhinged uh, for sure. I feel he's just had a, a lapse of concentration and his... his uh, the wind out of his lungs was just knocked out after that putt he missed on number 16. But uh, it's a great example of what golf is. I mean, how suddenly has the momentum changed? When we were standing on the green a few minutes back with an attempt at Eagle, we thought uh, anything short of Manu holding his chip shot, it is Veer's uh, event. And now suddenly seeing a um, few moments after that, the three putt from Veer, Standing on number 18, both at 17 under par, it just seems like uh, after those tee shots, Manu might be in a better position. The, the, it, it's a complete shift, complete change of events in uh, a matter of a few minutes. Yeah, this is uh, like they say, it's, it's it's not over till the fat lady sings. So it's the last putt goes in, you never know in golf. And that just goes to show uh, even more brilliantly what we've been talking about, uh, Manu's demeanor. It's like, just even when he was leading, he was doing his thing. Even when he was chasing, 
Yeah, uh, Yashas has got a demanding shot coming up because if he misses it left, Veer might be okay actually. Veer, if 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 that is him uh, on the card, he's gone there, through everything. Then he's probably actually gotten extremely lucky, and if that is where his drives ended up, um, it's not a difficult shot, but uh, it's not one where he's going to make a lot of errors. Uh, and lose shots. It's going to be interesting to see if that's where he's ended up now. That basically leaves Manu in a very, very precarious position. I think Manu's going to have to play this for a four and uh, bank on Veer also only making a par. There is a gap as we see it, but he's not choosing that one. Seems to be going to the left, and uh, given his practice swing, feel like he's playing like a three-quarter punch out with maybe a little cut and trying to get it as close to the green as he can. He's a good bunker shot player, so even if he finds the the bunker, it's fine. He's got thread a needle out here. Manages to push it out quite nicely and that ball's rolling towards the green, towards the bunker. Like you said, he actually played it for the bunker. Yeah, it's fine out there. It's, it's pretty straightforward bunker shot. So Manu in his head is quite sure that uh, a four should be enough to at least get him in a playoff. How aggressive do you think Veer is going to be from there? Yeah, it's actually, it actually depends on his lie. Uh, Ainesh, if he's, if he's lying on a, on a tight surface, it's a demanding shot. If he's if he's got a little bit of grass underneath his ball, it's it's quite easy. He plays that shot. It looked like oh, he had a pretty decent line. Shot. Yeah, the spin got a little extra spin. He did go for it. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes it's good to have that length when he's flown that water hazard. It's landed in the trees, not hit any of those trees, and scooted on uh, past the trees. So that's uh, a little bit of. Uh, Luck on his side as far as the result of that tee shot is concerned. Sometimes you need a little that, bit of luck to absolutely. win. Absolutely. Is that the stroke of luck that goes in his favor? We have uh, Nikhil, our media head in a black jacket along with the uh, golf captain Simarjit Singh. Golf captain of Noida Golf Course, that is. His uh, father used to be the secretary out here at one when I, when I first moved to uh, Noida. Good to see some of uh, the playing professionals as well in uh, amongst the crowd. Uh, Sighting of Dhruv Sharon right there. Well, um, you know, Manu has uh, played his, uh, his uh, options correctly. I think bunker is the best place to be on this hole. You can, you know, at least with the bunker, you, he knows how it's going to react. He's hit a brilliant pitch on the last hole. So it's, He's back. He's backing him. His short game, which is is uh, what you need to do. And he's time in again, proving that he plays uh, the best possible situation, and he doesn't really. And by uh, Yasha's there, a brilliant, yeah. brilliant bunker shot. Yeah, he's, that's a really good save from where he was after that tee shot. That is yeah. a much tougher bunker shot than what Manu has. Manu so... has a much more uh, straightforward bunker shot. In, and you know the grain is into him. The ball is gonna is gonna get a little bit of purchase when it lands. So he doesn't need very very straightforward. I have a feeling Manu is gonna try holding this, um, and that will be a lot of drama if he holds it. Absolutely, yeah. because I think Veer is uh, in a position where he's going to think that the second it's my turn, I'm gonna just hold this, and he got the putter out. And after that uh, little fiasco on number seventeen, he's not gonna let any breathing room to 
Manu. As long as this ball has carried enough pace to come to this side of the bunker. If it's in the the towards this, which is which he is, now he's got a little bit of upslope, so he's gonna get a little more height on his bunker it's shot. Very routine yeah. bunker shot. Yeah. I think uh, he's not going to struggle to really yeah. hit a poor one. Mm, that's uh Turn of tables there, I feel uh, maybe he didn't have the best of lives or he was just trying to be a little too cute with that shot. I think um, it was a former because sometimes you can get into these, you know, these rake marks which um, leave the ball a little uh, in a lie where you don't know how much it's of spin you're going to get on it. And now where the situation stands, Manu does have a fairly lengthy putt for par and Veer from a similar distance is going to putt for a birdie and the win. So this is the first time we can say somebody's had a, it's got a putt to win this, this tournament. Veer has a putt to win this tournament as of, as we stand right now. It's almost like a tennis match where uh, through the round, especially in the back nine, we've had uh, uh, game points and game points. And then finally, this is the opportunity where Veed has for the championship point. And the, 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 the strange thing is that very, very random lapse of concentration that he had on number 17. Had he just gone through a routine two putt there and he would have had two putts to win. I think he, yeah, he was, you know, he, for the first time, he called, got his uh, friend and carry back to have a look at that line and wasn't sure about that small part. So normally we haven't seen that uh, in him today. That was the first time he did it. And um, maybe wasn't sure about the read as uh, I don't think it was uh, that much of a lapse in concentration. He was just unsure about it. Well, whatever it was, currently where we stand, Veer Alawat, uh, in regulation play on hole number 18 with his third shot, has a chance to win the Delhi NCR Open 2024, yeah. presented by Nissan. He has a little slope to contend with. We can't see the ball. Oh, he's coming up uh, under the hole there, so... He's got, yeah, he should just go ahead and finish it off and put the ball in Manu's court. Manu's going to have a chance to now uh, get into a playoff. So we have confirmation that the Veer's caddy's name is Raj Veer and he's a junior golfer at DLF, right, uh, Ainish? I think he's just turned 18. Uh, looks like him. I think he looks like him. He's a funny little kid. He also packs a punch. And their own look is, if I'm not uh, wrong, uh, that's Veer's wife as well. Funny for me to say that he's, he is uh, uh, a year younger than me. Manu now, things from a very similar line to Veer and usually he doesn't need uh, that invitation. At least he knows he has to hold it. You know, this, uh, this is it. And uh, he's been putting well, so we'll give it a fair chance of going in. This to keep the championship alive. Yeah, he's kept his routine. He hasn't second-guessed himself yet, so... It's a really good view of the part, and he just overborrowed it. Overborrowed there. Uh, I think he reacted to Weed's part. Yeah, so I guess uh, you can almost safely say that uh, Weed is going to win this one. He's got it in the bag. He didn't make it easy. A little anticlimactic there with the Manu. Making a bogey. Yeah, I think uh, we uh, then ma then finish it off, and maybe it's, uh, he wants to uh, do it the the grand way. 
hit the winning part? Probably. Also, uh, Yash has here actually hit a brilliant bunker shot. Yeah, it was really good. He had a much tougher bunker shot. A much tougher bunker shot. Very yeah, well hold by Yashas. All in all, a good week for uh, Yashas. He's, uh, he's, he was well and truly in it. And he just those late bogeys on 16 and 17 um, derailed him. We're now just making sure he knows exactly where he's aligned, what he's doing. This part, pretty routine. Yeah, and that's uh, that's your winner of the Nissan presents Delhi NCR Open. Veer Alawat after his really good showing at the, the Indian Open this year, finishing second, wins uh, the Nissan presents Delhi Delhi NCR Open as well. That's wonderfully done. Greeted by his. Uh... Good friends, Amanat. I was waiting for somebody to come and pour some water, or uh, in this that? case, looks like a little cola. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, great to see the gesture, Manu. There, I mean, he was there in it till the last, but he's he's happy and enjoying. That is indeed uh, uh, Rajveer. Good to see him on the bag. Another competitive golfer. He would have learned a lot through yeah. these four rounds. It's always uh, good to be on the bag of a good player, man. You like get to learn so much. There we have it. Uh, a wonderfully played tournament, some wonderful golf. A little jitter on number 17 for Veer. A great duel. The tournament started uh, four days back with Manu finding himself in the lead after three rounds. Veer was uh, third with uh, him chasing two shots back. But we triumphs and, and there you are the leaderboard. So the winner, we allow it at 17 under. And Manu, correction there is uh, next bogey on 18 to go back to 16. Then you have Yashas at 14, Ajitesh at 12, Angad at 10, Rashid, Karan Sach at 9, Sachin, Abhinav, and Dhruv at sorry, Sachin and, and Abhinav at 8, and Dhruv at 6. So that makes your top. 10. This was a, it was a really uh, closely fought tussle there. You know, it's, um, it was, uh, it was like a seesaw battle. Absolutely. It was a credit to even uh, Yashas, the leader group. Uh, they gave us a scare, including Ajitesh and Angad at one point. Uh, they all, everybody was picking and picking and uh, digging towards that lead. But uh, Manu and Veer Alawat at the end of the day showing why they are currently one of the top players uh, in the country. A wonderful four days and I hope everybody who was watching us enjoyed the coverage. So, you know, um, Veer actually had, had the low round of the day. He, he shot six under, which is the lowest round in the field today. So... Well and truly deserves to be the winner. Absolutely. And uh, I'm sure it is great, great learning for uh, uh, Yashas. Although he is a seasoned pro himself, but uh, playing alongside uh, Veer and Manu, who've done so much already, it's great to see them doing this. See, that's uh, the winner, Veer, working his way towards the scoring area, which is. Uh, where you need to sign your scorecard. Though we know his score, he needs to sign for it. And whatever he signs for holds good. So make sure you go through your scorecard. I'm sure he's done it. I don't want to check. <laughs> he's getting his caddy to check with him as well. Yes. I don't want to check like six times. You know, let's, uh, there was a very, uh, there was a, in yesteryears, there was a, uh, there was a golfer called, um, he was from Argentina. He, can't remember his name right now. And he signed for a scorecard more than what he played at the Masters. And he would have gone into a playoff and ultimately oh, wow. finished second. Well, that is disappointing. But I think uh, he's going to get all of this in order. Yeah, he needs to make sure his score is intact. We have his score in case he wants us to you know, brief him. We can read it out to him. We actually lives uh, very close to where I live. So I'm going to send him a message to give me a treat. Actually, this is my way of telling him to give me a treat now. 
you know, send him a message, tell him to watch the coverage, especially when you've signed the scorecard, and he knows what to do then. Um, but a big congratulations to Veer Alavad, and I'm sure, uh, as did we, all the viewers enjoyed that golf on the final day. Yeah, Sunday. that was that was very exciting finish. This is what we wanted. Uh, you know, this is uh, probably as exciting for us as it was for him. They're the familiar and uh, comforting faces of uh, Jay Prakash and Gagan Chanda. Always there at the end of the round and the beginning of your round. Yeah, and JP is like almost synonymous with this uh, with this tour. He's been there since inception. Yes, and he knows all the players. He's he's uh, a very jovial person to be around, always encouraging everybody around him. And that's Wilson. Wilson used to be Uttam's caddy earlier. He's in, and Sampath is uh, been here. He was there when it was we we had the PGAI, and now he's here and he's. Uh, Someone you always want to lean back on when it comes to the rules of golf. It's a good look at the behind the scenes of a golf tournament, the the crew and the staff that actually make it all happen. Yeah, and then uh, they set uh, it up for golfers like Manu, Yasha, and Veer, yeah, the man. That's Poonam who works at the accounts of the PGTI. And then that was Prabhash. And there no, that was Nikhil.
Anga Chima, Veera Lawat, Yashas Chandra, Manu Gandas, and Ajitesh Sandhu. At the end, we had the most deserving winner. Now, to begin proceedings, I'd like to invite here Mr. Sampachari, Tournament Director, PGTI, Dr. Stephen Menezes, Secretary, Noida Golf Course, Mr. Simarjit Singh, Captain, Noida Golf Course, Mr. Umesh Dubey, Chairman, Tournament and Handicapping, Noida Golf Course, Mr. Rajesh Srivastav, Head Marketing and Communications, Nissan Motor India, and Mr. Vikas Singh, Head Marketing, PGTI. Can we have silence at the back, please? To start off, I'd like to request Mr. Sampachari to kindly make the opening address. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you very much for all of you being here for the prize presentation function. And what a tournament we've had. We have had a fantastic field out here. And a week uh, back when we came out here and what the golf course is right now, so it's just made amazing changes. Uh, thanks God to the captain of the club, Simurjit, uh, the secretary of the club, Mr. Menezes. It's been awesome being out here. And this is a venue that we must not miss. It's got a lot of challenges that it uh, throws out to the pros. I mean, excellent conditions finally in the end, though there was a lot of scarcity of water which one could feel. But uh, overall, I think the Greens Committee has done a fantastic job in finally giving us the golf course the way we wanted it. And I think it played extremely well today. Thanks to all the members who came out and watched the game today. It was extremely nice of all of you to be out there, uh, you know, bearing the sun out there. And uh, we definitely look forward to coming back here and being a part of this wonderful golf course in the years to come, onward and ever on. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. I'd now like to request Mr. Simarjit Singh, Captain Noida Golf Course, to kindly address the gathering. Uh, good afternoon, friends. I would like to thank the PGTI once again for uh, choosing Noida Golf Course as a stop for the NCR Open. A lot of hard work was put in uh, for a month by our uh, team of course staff to make this course challengeable to our uh, top professionals. Thank you to all the top professionals for agreeing to participate in this tournament. I happen to play with Veer Alavat on the Pro-Am day. 17 underscore, excellent scoring by Veer, Manu Gandas. I also happen to play the first two days with Yashas Chandra. Excellent golf. The level of golf has tremendously improved. So the future of Indian golf is definitely on a high and uh, wishing you all professionals a great year ahead. I would like to thank our management, Chairman Tournament, Mr. Umesh Dube, our CEO and Secretary, Dr. Stephen Menezes, and all the members for uh, supporting this excellent event, which is thoroughly enjoyed by all the members. And also live coverage on Eurosport and ABB Live, it's excellent. A big thank you to the sponsor, the new sponsors, Nissan, Bisleri, and all the other sponsors. A big thank you. The sponsors are increasing. This shows that the Indian golf is on a high. Wishing you all the best for the next tournament. Hopefully, I can't say that see you next year because we are under the process of uh, final stages of uh, the renovation. So hopefully, if everything goes on well, you will, we'll see you on the new golf course and not a golf course. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We now have a plaque presentation ceremony. I would request Mr. Vikas Singh, Head Marketing PGTI, to kindly present a plaque as PGTI's token of appreciation to Mr. Rajesh Srivastav, Head Marketing and Communications, Nissan Motor India. A big thank you to Nissan for supporting this event and the last event. I would now request 
Dr. Stephen Menezes, Mr. Simarjit Singh, and Mr. Omesh Dubey to kindly jointly present the check to the runner-up, Manu Gandas, with scores of 68, 69, 66, and 69 for a total of 16 under 272. He takes away a prize money check worth rupees 10 lakh. Is now time to announce the champion, and I would request Mr. Rajesh Srivastav, Head Marketing and Communications, Nissan Motor India, to kindly present the winning check and the trophy to our champion this week. It's his third pro win. He's been on a run recently. He finished runner-up at the Indian Open a couple of weeks back. So, Veer Alawat, our winner this week, scores of 68, 67, 70, and 66 for a total of 17 under 271. He takes home the trophy and a prize money check worth rupees 15 lakh. Builds further on his lead in the Tata Steel PGTI ranking. It's now time for the customary winner's speech. So would request the winner to kindly address the gathering. Hello, everyone. This win is really special. My parents, they saw me win for the first time. And <laughs> like, this is like the best feeling to win in front of parents. And uh, my mom was there. My mom has walked with me maybe once or twice, and to win in front of her as a pro is like the biggest achievement for me. My wife's there, <laughs> really lucky for me. <laughs> and, and my caddy, the luckiest caddy, <laughs> where is he? Right there. Thank you, Rajvi. And uh, thank you to the sponsors, Nissan. Uh, Noida Golf Course, uh, thank you for uh, giving us the golf course. Thank you. Many congratulations, Veer. Kindly stay on for a few interviews after the prize presentation. With that, we come to the end of this ceremony. But before wrapping up, we'd like to thank Nissan Motor India for being the presenting partner and for their support to the tour. Noida Golf Course. Dr. Stephen Menezes, a big thank you to also all the committee members, the co-staff, F&B staff, all players, referees, and officials, and finally, the tour partners of PGTI, Rolex, Tata Steel, Nissan, Bisleri, Amrutanjan, Fruitnik Electro Plus, Golf Plus Monthly, Athletic Drive, Golf Design India, Eurosport, and ABP Live for the fantastic coverage on the last two days. Thank you, and look forward to seeing you next year here at the Noida Golf Course. Thank you.